Chapter 3061 Favor for the Savior Li Bing usual was very strong. She awoke from her coma very quickly. The moment she opened her eyes, Li Bing Yu saw Han Sin's smiling face. She remembered what she saw before she passed out and immediately jumped from the ground, staring at Han Sin. Li Bing Yu remembered Han Sin had been wrapped up in a red fire. It was like a god's spirit had descended. One punch sent the blood ghost spirit flying. She looked at Han Senator at first, she was shocked, but now she was just confused. That confusion was now changing to a more complicated emotion. If this was really ghost kill, she would think Hansen was strong. She would not have been able to understand what being strong meant. Li Bingyu was different. Her real identity was one of the nine leaders of Wu Wei Dao Palace. Her knowledge was much more extensive than ghost kill. A rare gene race like the Blood Ghost Spirit had been punched once and sent flying by Han Senator seeing the situation as it was now. The chance that the Blood Ghost Spirit had been killed by Han Sen was in the range of 80% to 100%. That was something the word strong could not describe. Even in Wu Wei Dao Palace, that kind of elite was very rare to see. A character who had that sort of frightening power but was not famous was very hard to believe. Han Sen looked at Li Bing Yu and asked, Are you okay? Who are you for real? Li Bing Yu asked as she intensely stared at Hansen. My name is Han Senator, do you not remember me? Oh, no. Did you hit your head? Do you remember we followed peaceful to ancient Big God Mountain? Hansen kept speaking and using his fingers to touch Li Bing Yu's forehead. He checked out her pupils, trying to confirm if her brain was rattled. Li Bing Yu was angry. She smacked Hansen's hand away and coldly said, Stop making fun. If you were able to beat the Blood Ghost Spirit, how are you a nobody? Furthermore, why did you make me unconscious? Hansen spread his hands and explained, I really am just a nobody. There is nothing I can do about that if you do not believe me. I only knocked you out to heal your wounds. It would have been very painful if you were awake. I was unable to numb your body, so I had no choice but to knock you out so you would not have to feel the intense pain. He looked sincere. Li Bingyu remembered she had been badly injured and the blood ghost spirit's power had overwhelmed her body. It covered her god's spirit blood pulse. Now, the blood ghost spirit's body was no longer inside her. The wounds she had incurred were already healed. Clearly, Hansen had helped her get rid of the powers of the blood ghost spirit. Where is the blood ghost spirit? Li Bingyu looked strange as she hovered around, unable to locate the body of the blood ghost spirit. He ran, Hansen casually said as he stood up. If you're okay, then we should get out of here. Peaceful escaped, and we do not know what or where this hidden god pulse is. We should return to ancient god city first. Hang on. Seeing Hansen turn to leave, Li Bingyu flashed and prohibited his departure. Her pretty eyes stared at Hansen. What is going on? Hansen smiled. Ghost kill thought. Although things have not gone to plan, this is a good chance for me to get closer to him. I cannot let this opportunity slide. Thinking of this, Ghost Kill looked calm. She looked at Hansen and slowly said, I, Ghost Kill, never want to owe someone anything. You saved my life, which means my life is yours. Why would I want your life? Hansen laughed. It is up to you, but I do owe you my life, Ghost Kill seriously said. Then, how are you looking to pay me for it? Hansen looked at Ghost Kill with interest. Ghost Kill did not think twice. She immediately said, From now on, I will follow you. If anyone seeks to do you harm, they can only do so over my dead body. I will save your life, no matter what the cost. There is no need for that trouble. People can't really pay back the life-saving thing. If you use your body with me, you won't have to die. So, why don't you just do that? Hansen smiled and looked at Ghost Kill as he spoke. Ghost Kill's expression changed. She gnashed her teeth and said, You might have saved my life, but that does not mean you must humiliate me. Never mind. If you don't want to do that, then there is no point in you following me. Let's go our separate ways. Hansen turned around and walked away. He did not want someone like Ghost Kill around him, so that was why he said what he had. Ghost Kill's expression kept changing. She gritted her teeth and followed. She did not say a word as she tailed him. Hansen knew the Lone Sky Dragon was still out on the prowl. He had exhausted a lot of power earlier. He did not have any more power left to break the world's rules as they stood. So, he was not able to combat the Lone Sky Dragon by himself. He had to find another way. The Blood Ghost Spirit and the Gold Winged Peacock King were stronger than the Lone Sky Dragon, but they were just juveniles. 
they were unable to fight the Lone Sky Dragon just yet. The Stone Palace was not very big. After having a mosey around, they were not able to find another exit. Li Bingyu crouched on the ground and investigated the dead body. She was unable to find anything. She figured Hansen had probably searched it while she was unconscious. She just didn't know what it was he might have found. Hansen buried the skeleton and said, There are no other exits. Do you have a way to walk around where the Lone Sky Dragon roams? We need to avoid where the Blood Ghost Spirit lies too if we are to get out of here. There is one way we can attempt. Li Bingyu pointed her finger. A mole-like gene race was summoned. Its body was twice as big as an ordinary mole. Its claws were like metal. This is a king-class, landpulse mole. It has powerful digging and locator powers. Perhaps it can lead us out. While Li Bingyu was talking, the landpulse mole was already digging around the stone palace. Han Sin and Li Bingyu followed it. The landpulse mole kept digging the stone. Not long later, it dug a hole in the wall and started drilling. There was a cave in front of where it drilled. It was not just drilling aimlessly. They followed the landpulse mole for half a day before walking out of the cave above the surface. They were no longer in the Jade Lion Valley. Follow me. Li Bingyu scanned the environment and started going in a specific direction. Han Sen was not interested in exploring ancient Big God Mountain. He just wanted to return to ancient God City. He wanted to do some research and figure out the contents of the book and see what he could find. Han Sen had a feeling that the notebook had some very important information. Its secrets might have more information on how Qin Xiao had entered the universe. It was a shame the ancient language he used to know could not be used for the ancient language of this world. He needed some other information to figure out what the notebook said. Chapter 3062 Reverse Life Cycle When they had almost left ancient Big God Mountain, Li Bingyu suddenly said, If it was me, I would not go into town right now. Why? Hansen looked at Li Bingyu with interest. Oh, Yang Chioshan was killed in ancient Big God Mountain, Li Bingyu said. He was the only person who had a perfect god spirit blood pulse in the past few years. He was the Oh Young family's favorite child. The Oh Young family will not just let this slide. Are you saying the Oh Young family is going to lay the blame of his death on our feet? Hansen quietly asked. Someone will be held accountable for this, Li Bingyu said. Perhaps the Oh Young family might not do anything to peaceful, but it is hard to determine what might happen to the others. Their son died. They will probably do something to allay their anger. We didn't have a grudge with Oh Young Chio Shan, and we did not offend him, Hansen said with a frown. Why would they want us dead? Li Bingyu coldly said, If a crown prince is murdered out there, the guards that were in charge of protecting him would all be killed. Does that make sense to you? Hansen laughed and said, I suppose you were right. In that case, where do you think I should go? You can go anywhere. Just avoid ancient God City, Li Bingyu said. Don't go there again. In my opinion, you should leave the planet. Oh, Yang family members are only nobles in ancient God City. Once you have left this planet, the Oh Yang family will no longer pose a threat to you. Do you think the Oh Yang family is stronger than the Blood Ghost Spirit? Hansen looked at Li Bingyu and blinked as he spoke. Regarding sheer power, the Oh Yang family is not stronger than you, but the Oh Yang family are nobles of the Qin Kingdom. You, however, are a nobody in the Qin Kingdom. If there is ever a conflict, even if you kill the Oh Young family, you'll have a lot of trouble in the Qin Kingdom territories. You are right. Hansen was not afraid of the Oh Young family, but it would be very troublesome. Yea. If you need it, I have a way to safely send you to another planet, Li Bingyu said. After thinking a moment, Hansen said, Thank you. But before that, I need to locate Mr. Young. That will not be difficult. If he is an ancient god city, I can ask him to come out and meet with you. But it is not on me whether or not he wants to meet you. What are you trying to say? Hansen asked. Li Bingyu looked at Hansen and said, If ordinary people have to choose between you and Dragon Song City's peace, family, people will choose the latter option. If it was you, what would you do? No matter what, we must bring him back, Hansen coldly said. If we cannot do that, I will go back to the city myself to find him. Mr. Young knew that Hansen had come out of a gene egg. He wanted an explanation as to how that came to be. Hansen was not going to just simply leave it alone. Fine, I understand. I will bring Mr. Young back, Li Bingyu said. She then turned into smoke and vanished. Li Bingyu was a very efficient person. Even Hansen was surprised. 
She only took half the day to bring Mr. Yang back. Mr. You are safe. Mr. Yang was so happy to see Hansen. I am planning to leave Ancient God Planet. Hansen looked at Mr. Yang and asked, Are you going to follow me, or are you going to stay? I already said I would follow you to the ends of the world, Mr. Yang quickly said. I will always go with you wherever. In that case, Ghost Kill, please arrange things. Hansen looked at Li Bing Yu as he spoke. That will be no problem. Where do you want to go? Li Bing. Yu was happy. She thought, if he is going to the Qin Kingdom's capital, I can get closer to Crown Prince Qin Bai. Let's go to Turin Planet, Hansen quietly said. Sure. Hearing that Hansen did not want to go to the Qin Kingdom's capital, Li Bingyu was disappointed. She did not say anything negative and simply agreed. W. Hansen's decision to go to Turin Planet was not a random one. Legends claim that the big Qin Kingdom's Emperor Qin Xiao was born on Turin Planet. It was Qin Xiao's home. Qin Xiao and Qin Wanner were alleged to have been born there, so Hansen thought it was worth scoping out. He hoped to find a lead there. Hansen and Mr. Yang operated beneath what Li Bingyu prepared. They reached an interstellar cargo ship with Li Bingyu. Traveling in space took a long time. Hansen found a chance to browse the internet. He had been researching the content of the notebook. After he had a deep session of research, the information he learned surprised him. Qin Xiao put Qin Wanner's body in a mysterious coffin and sealed her inside. It preserved her body, keeping her look the same way as the moment of her death. It prevented her corpse from rotting. Afterward, he waited for his chance to revive her. An important officer of the Qin Kingdom was by Emo Qin Xiao commanded him to find a skill that could resurrect the dead. He wanted to bring Qin Wanner back from the dead. Bai Mo tried many ways to accomplish it, but nothing worked. In the end, he found some information. That information came from an old place in the original star. Many things were recorded and too surprising to believe. After Bai Mo shared his research, no one dared to believe what was written, but most of the parts really did exist. The notebook did not mention what it was, but there was a line that shocked Hansen. Death was just another beginning. Bai Mo must have looked tense when he wrote that down. His handwriting looked different from how it was normally. It looked like a fast scrawl. It was easy to tell how excited he was. That sentence was something other people would not understand the meaning of. When Hansen saw the sentence, he was fairly confident of his guess. The content behind it tried to explain what it meant, which was that energy was forever. It would not disappear. It would just appear in different shapes. Humans and the creatures of the universe of kingdoms were energy. They would not disappear from the universe. When a human died, they continued with another life. According to Bai Mo's research, after a human died, they were born in another world. If they died in the other world, they would be born in the universe of kingdoms. Bai Mo called this energy-changing process reincarnation. It was unknown if it was a coincidence, but Bai Mo called the other world the antimaterial world. If the creatures from the right world did not exist in the antimaterial originally, they would be destroyed if they tried to cross over. The creatures between the two worlds always believed the opposing world was the anti-material world. This suggestion suited Hans Senator, he had guessed this as well. There was something Hansen had yet to understand. What role did a god spirit play between these two worlds? The content in the back shocked Hansen even more when by Emo researched an old faction. He discovered that this old faction had a relic that opened a path to connect the two worlds. The Crystal Stone. Hansen saw the relic on the notebook. It was in the same shape as the black crystal stone. It was just like the one he saw on the cave wall. Chapter 3063 Understanding the Cause Hansen was very eager to keep reading it. He continued reading what was in the back of the notebook. He wanted to learn more and find out what the black crystal stone was. Bayamo had mentioned that the black crystal stone could open the tunnel between two worlds. Qin Xiao might have made use of the black crystal stone to enter the Geno universe. If things were like that, then that is a fair explanation. If Qin Wanna was born in another world, the Wano in this world would have been impossible for him to revive. It would have been useless no matter what Qin Xiao attempted. That is unless he accessed another world and found a Qin Wanna that was born there and brought her back. Hansen had figured out why Qin Xiao went to the Geno universe. Although life worked in a cycle, a person never really died. On the other hand, Reincarnation did not mean the same person was alive beyond the veil. Without the feelings and memories of a past life, even if she was still alive, 
the Chin Wandler from that life and the Wana from the other life would have had no shared connection. To Chin Xiao, the Wana he had found was just a Wana that was a witch. That was not his real sister, Wanner. The reason Qin Xiao wanted to take Wanler back was so she could combine with the body of her past life and recover her memories. To do that, he needed to open the path between the two worlds. The Geno Hall prevented that from occurring. So, Qin Xiao had to break the Geno Hall and bring Wanner back. If Qin Xiao really used the Black Crystal Stone to go to the Geno universe, he should have been able to use the Black Crystal Stone to bring Wanner back. There was no reason he had to stir up as much trouble as he did. If I get that black crystal, that would be the relic by Emo described. Why did it appear in the first sanctuary in the sanctuaries? Why was it not in Qin Shou's hands? It was such an important item. With Qin Shou's powers and planning, there was no way he would have lost it. Have I analyzed this all incorrectly? Who knows? Maybe something happened. Hansen thought about all of this for a long time, but he could not get the answers he sought. The content in the back of Bai Mo's notebook detailed what occurred after he found the old faction's relic and the ruins. Because the original star was destroyed, that old faction no longer existed now. Bai Mo tried everything he could to find out more about it. Maybe they were blessed, and Bai Mo found a lead. Although he could not find the leader of that old faction, it enabled him to find the relic and stone stove. Inside the stone stove, there had been a weird skill. It was the older version of the story of genes. Bayamo had given the relic and the story of genes that had been copied to Qin Xiao, who approved him to research it even further. Although he did not find out the secrets of the story of genes, they found out the use of the relic. According to the notebook, in the end, Qin Xiao was an ancient big god mountain. He used the relic to enter Bayamo's anti-material world. It was the universe Han Sen had been born in. After Qin Xiao left, by Mo continued to research the story of genes, but it was very slow going with almost zero progress. The notebook ended there. By Mo no longer wrote about himself, and he had not written anything about why the stone stove contained the egg of a gold-winged peacock. Regarding Mo Lee's two gene races, whether their presence there was a coincidence or not, it was still a mystery that Hansen was unable to shine a light on. This is very bad. Qin Xiao used the Black Crystal Stone to reach the Geno universe. Although the Black Crystal Stone turned into a Black Crystal Armor in my Sea of Soul, that was beyond my control. It pulled me here, so using it to take me back is likely impossible. Hansen stared into the Sea of Soul and observed the Black Crystal Armor. It was unmoving, just hanging where it always was. Although he felt the Black Crystal Armor, because he practiced the story of genes, it made him have a special connection to the black crystal armor. Boss, what do you want? Say something. I am a man with a wife and kids. I want to go and see her. Give me a holiday. Let me go home for two days or perhaps even just one day. Hansen whispered to the black crystal armor. He was almost kneeling, but the black crystal armor did not react. It was still dead, lying where it was. If he was able to drag the black crystal armor out of him, Hansen would do just that and beat up the black crystal armor with all his might. But he was unable to control the black crystal armor. By Mo's notebook said the relic can fasten the evolution of a gene race. It enables the juveniles to level up fast. In a very short amount of time, it can become an adult. It is even possible to accelerate their development into an ultimate mode. It can also make a low-rank gene race mutate into a higher rank. This function is similar to the black crystal stone in the sanctuaries. Now, it is a set of armor. Those abilities are useless now. After thinking about that, Hans Sen's eyes opened wide. An evil smile crossed his lips. You broken piece of armor. You were trying to trick me. Do you think I cannot deal with you? Hans Sen's eyes looked bright. He was making commands to the gold-winged peacock king in the Sea of Souls. After the gold-winged peacock king received Hans Sen's command, it made a very light screen. It flapped its wings and flew over to the black crystal armor. It opened its bird beak. Its moss suddenly grew bigger. It swallowed the black crystal armor. Let's see how long you can stay there for. If possible, try not to make a sound, Hansen madly thought. He watched the gold-winged peacock king, which had just eaten the black crystal armor. Suddenly, Hansen saw the gold-winged peacock king glow with gold light. Some light came out of its body. It was like silk. It wrapped up his body and quickly formed a giant golden egg. It trapped him inside. By this time, Hansen had researched the information of quite a few gene races. 
He knew this gold-winged peacock was becoming an adult. Does the black crystal stone's function still work? Hansen had a weird look on his face. He thought the black crystal armor would fight back, but it did not fight back in the least. It let the gold-winged peacock king use its powers to transform. The gold-winged peacock transformation was something that could be completed in a short amount of time. Hansen watched it for half a day. The gold egg had yet to display any sort of movement. By then, the ship had docked on Turin Planet. Mr. Yang and Li Bingyu came looking for Han Senator. The three of them said goodbye to the crew of the ship and hopped off. Baimo said Qin Wanner's body was sealed in a mysterious place in the Qin Kingdom's palace. It was Qin Xiao that did it. If Qin Wanner really did go through a reverse tunnel as I did, and if that is true, I will have to go to the capital of the Qin Kingdom. Hansen thought of that possibility. While Hansen was deep in thought, he suddenly heard the crack of a whip and some nasty voices. Stop playing dead. Get moving. A noble guard was holding a thunder whip. He used it to keep striking the people that came off the ship. Those people were all dressed in tattered clothing. Most of them looked injured. They cried awfully loud when they were hit. Hansen noticed that the ship they had been on was used for human trafficking. For such a developed kingdom, how can there be slavery? Hansen frowned. Chapter 3064 Jian Bugu. Although Hansen's simplified assumption of them being slaves was correct, this was simply how the seven kingdoms of the universe worked. It wasn't as if saving a few slaves would ever solve the problem. Seeing these slaves, he noticed there were many children in their midst. They were all wearing AI bracelets and AI handcuffs. They were like cats and dogs being chased. Hansen shook his head. Mr. Yang watched Hansen shake his head and sighed. People did not have high or lower tiers before. With God's spirits and blood pulses, there is now that distinction. While they were talking, they suddenly heard a little girl cry. Mother. Mother. Hansen and the others turned around to look. A young mother had collapsed to the ground, blocking the advance of the slaves that were bound to her. The guard holding the whip went over to strike her with it. The young mother seemed to have something wrong with her body. She was unable to get up. She tried her best to hold the little girl who was crying and let the whip only fall on her. Suddenly, a hand grabbed the whip. After looking, it was a middle-aged man who had been nearby. Judging from the way he appeared, he also had a necklace and bracelet. He was obviously one of the other slaves being sold. You should be more forgiving. Killing them earns you nothing, and you are only going to impact the profits of the sale. The middle-aged salve let the whip go as he spoke to the guard. The guard was always bullying the slaves. Now, one of the slaves was standing up to him. He felt humiliated. He looked furious. He cracked the whip at that slave and madly yelled, I am happy to whip you guys all to your deaths. The middle-aged man accepted a few of those whip strikes. It led to the development of bloody streaks on his body. Even so, he did not allow the whip to fall on the mother and child. He stood firm where he was. As this kept on going, the guard was growing angrier. He swore and hit even harder, saying, F asterisk CK. If you want to die, that is fine by me. His wrist was suddenly grabbed by another hand. He was no longer able to whip. What are you doing? The guard saw that the person holding him back was not a slave. It was someone who had just come off the same ship. He was not going to be as horrible to him as he was to the slaves. How much are these three people? I am taking them. Hansen let go of the whip and pointed at the middle-aged man, mother, and girl. You want to buy three slaves? A manager-looking man walked over and checked Hansen out. Manager went. The guard quickly bowed to the man. He behaved really politely. Yes, Hansen said with a nod. Manager went stared at Hansen for a bit and smiled. These slaves are meant for the Seven Hearts Department. Normally, we cannot just sell pre-booked ones. Then, just give me a price that is higher than what they paid, Hansen said with a smile. Manager one was happy. He knew he had met a rich guy on this day. He thought, fat pigs that deliver themselves. I must scam them a lot. Manager when told the truth. The slaves were meant for the Seven Hearts Department, and transporting slaves always resulted in a death or two. When the slaves were delivered, they would always send more than needed. Those people were slotted in the replacement reserve. This time, there were many in the backlog of reserves. If someone was fine paying a higher price, he did not mind selling three. Mister, you are causing me trouble here. Manager when decided to scam money from Han Senator, he tried acting as if this was a difficult thing. 
Hansen looked at Manager Wen and asked, What kind of price would not trouble you? Manager Wen finally smiled and said, If you take them this quickly, mister, then I will just sell them to you for a low price. I will go ahead and find a way to explain this to the Seven Hearts Department. These three slaves will cost 3,000 king money. You can just take them. If the Seven Hearts Department wants an explanation, they can answer to me. I will shoulder the responsibilities. 3,000 king money is way too high, Mr. Yang madly said. In the market, an adult slave normally only cost 50 or 60 king money. Even young ones were only around 100. Those from a big slave ship were usually even cheaper to buy. Three slaves for 3,000 king money was grossly overpriced. You can't say that. These are the slaves the Seven Hearts Department wants. I am taking you a huge risk here by giving them to you. Before Manager when finished his speech, Hansen interrupted him. He said to Mr. Yang, Mr. Give him the money. I want these three people. Mr. Yang thought he had been totally scammed, but if Hansen agreed... He had no choice but to give manager one the three three thousand king money. Mister, you are smart. If there is anything else you need, come and find me, manager one said as he accepted the three thousand king money. His expression looked extremely happy. Oh, it was just three slaves, and they were not worth much. Yet he had managed to sell them for a hundred times the original price. Manager one happily gave him the slave contracts for the three people. Hansen accepted the slave contracts. Mr. Yang gave them to the slaves. He lifted the mother and daughter. What is your name? Hansen waved at the middle-aged man. Thank you for saving me. My name is Jian Bugu. The middle-aged man waved back. After hearing the name, everybody was a bit shocked. After their reactions were done, the guard who had been hitting the slaves looked disdained and said, You are a slave, yet your name is Jian Bugu. Are you not afraid someone will cut your head off? The other people laughed and said, this slave's name is very bold. He uses the same name as the tutor of the Big Qin Kingdom's King Jian Bugu. It is a shame you have the same name but live a totally different life. One is a famous king tutor in the Qin Kingdom, and one is a cheap slave. Manager Wen thought it was funny. A slave's name is Jian Bugu. If he can sell for 3,000 king money, I do not care what he is called. He can even call himself Sky God. While everyone was talking, Hansen understood what Jian Bugu's name was. The king's tutor was one of the three main officers. When the king was too young or no one was in charge, he would assert stewardship over the kingdom. Jian Bugu was not just a king's tutor. He was the first swordsman of the Qin kingdom. Ten years ago, Jian Bugu quit. No one had heard about him for a long time. No one would have thought that the slave in front of them was the first swordsman of the Qin kingdom, Jian Bugu. Hansen did not know if he was the real Jian Bugu. He had never heard his name before, but he could tell that the man was special. He was quiet, and not everyone had that aura about them. Li Bingyu examined Jian Bugu. She did not believe Jian Bugu had become a slave, but she did think this slave looked rather familiar. Although Li Bingyu had never met Jian Bugu, there were paintings of Jian Bugu in Wu Wei Dao Palace. That middle aged man looked a little older than the person in the Jian Bugu paintings. He did not emanate the superior feeling of the Jian Bugu from the paintings. When she looked closely, the eyebrows looked rather similar. Chapter 3065 Holy When White Deer Turin Planet was different from ordinary planets. It was a planet without a god temple. Without a god temple, there were no cities to be built around the absent god temple. Thus, planet Turin was a very rare planet with multiple cities. On Turin, there were a few hundred smaller cities. On the largest pier of the city, Spirit Light City, Hansen, Mr. Young, Ghost Kill, Jin Bugu, and the mother and daughter walked along the streets. You do not have to do this, mister. If you have somewhere to go, I recommend you just go. Hansen spoke to Jin Bugu, who was walking alongside him. Jin Bugu shook his head. Mister, you spent 3,000 king money to buy me. Unless I do something to pay you back, I belong to you now. Hansen laughed. He did not say anything. He just looked at the mother and daughter and said, If you guys want to leave, I can give you some money to help get you started. Please, keep us in your employ. The young mother pulled the little girl closer to kowtow before Hansen. Get up. If you guys want to stay, then you can stay. Hansen frowned. Mr. Young helped them get up. Hansen asked Mr. Young, Old Young, Do you know where King Chin used to live? King Chin lived in King Chin City, but there used to be no city. King Chin lived there 
so it was built there. Mr. Young was next to Han's senator. He told him legends and stories while they walked. At this time, in Seven Hearts' department, Manager Wen's face looked as gray as the earth. His mouth was wide open as he looked at the Seven Hearts' department leader, Fong Chi Yuan, in absolute shock. Leader Fong, you must be joking. Manager Wen was unable to speak straight. Who has the time to spare joking about with you? The person you sold really was the Jin Bugu, who was the famous king's tutor in the Qin Kingdom. He was once so famous. Fang Chi Yuan looked at Manager Wen as if he was an idiot. Manager Wen still could not believe it and said, That should be impossible. If he really was the king's tutor, Jian Bugu, how could he have become a slave and enable others to bully him? There has to be something wrong there. Fang Chi Yuan coldly laughed. About ten years ago, Jian Bu. Gu was commanded by the king to go into Wu Wei Dao. Palace alone. He was required to kill the two leaders of Wu. Wei Dao Palace and force the Wu Wei Dao Palace out of the Qin Kingdom's realm. Jian Bu Gu's swordsman teacher was one of Wu Wei Dao's nine leaders, the sword grandmaster. He felt as if he betrayed his teacher, so he decided to stop fighting for 20 years. Dead or alive, he would not fight anybody. He also quit his position in the government and vanished without a trace. Back then, I saw Jian Bu Gu a few times. I saw him attack. Wu Wei Dao Palace, so that person had to be Jian Bu Gu. After he said that, Fang Chi Yuan looked at Manager Wen's pasty face. He lifted his lips and said, If you could have kept Jian Bu Gu, no matter if you sent him to the Qin Kingdom or sold him to Wu Wei Dao Palace, you would have had so much fortune. I cannot believe you pawned him off for only 3,000 king money. Only you would strike such a terrible business deal. When Manager Wen heard that, he dropped to the floor in a state of paralysis. He was like a madman repeating the words and sentence, I sold Qin Kingdom's king's tutor Jian Bu Gu for 3,000 king money. Fang Chi Yuan's eyes looked as if they were on fire. It has not yet been 20 years. It looks like that Jian Bu Gu is holding true to his promise. It must be fate that God has enabled me to find him. Han Sen and the others did not know what was happening in the Seven Hearts Department, but Li Bingyu kept examining Jian Bu Gu. She looked murderous. Jian Bu Gu killed two leaders of the Dao Palace. One of them was Li Bingyu's teacher. With Li Bingyu's age and skill, she was not yet able to be a leader yet. Whichever way one looked at it, Jian Bu Gu was Li Bingyu's nemesis. Li Bingyu was not entirely certain that the Jian Bu Gu in front of her was the real king's tutor of the Qin kingdom who was so famous. She wasn't there to witness the fight. While Li Bingyu was still thinking about all of this, she suddenly heard footsteps that sounded like rain. A man in white clothes was riding atop a white deer. He did, however, possess a black beard. The white deer, though, was far prettier than a horse. It glowed with holy light. Hansen saw the deer and the man. He saw the white deer was coming toward them, so he stopped. In just a moment, the white deer was thirty feet away from them and stopped. It had been moving so fast, but it was able to instantly stop. It did it so naturally. It was like the white deer was frozen on the ground and entirely unmoving. I heard you bought three slaves for 3,000 king money. How about I spend 30,000 king money and take one of them off your hands? Fang Chi Yuan sat atop the white deer, smiling as he spoke. He did not look at Hansen once. He merely stared at Jian Bu Gu. I am not making a trade with you, Hansen said as he looked at Fang Chi Yuan. Mr. Young looked at Hansen seriously and quietly said, Be careful, mister. That man is probably riding atop the ultimate body of a holy one white deer. In the Big Qin Kingdom, it is in the top 100 gene races to be found. Fang Chi Yuan ignored Han Sen and Mr. Yang. He only looked at Jian Bu Gu and asked, Mr. King's tutor, do you remember me? I am Fang Chi Yuan. After he said that, Mr. Yang was shocked. He did not expect that the slave was really the Qin Kingdom's king's tutor, Jian Bu Gu. Jian Bugu calmly looked at Fang Chi Yuan and said, You are the student of Sky Leader. I saw you on Sky Path Peak. You were standing next to Sky Leader. If you know that, then there is no need for me to talk crap, Fang Chi Yuan coldly said. You owe Wu Wei Dao Palace, and today is the day you should pay them back. His body glowed. The Holy One White Deer combined with his body, and it made Fang Chi Yuan's body stronger. His head had a holy set of antlers. He looked very holy. His hands turned into the trotters of a deer. They looked as if they had been born with a holy mark. His eyes had a godlight in them.
Fang Chi Yuan faced his palms towards Jian Bu Gu. The holy light flashed like a flooding sky river. It gathered across his holy text and made the holy text glow. The holy text looked as if it was born from the sky and earth. It triggered the power of the sky and earth. It made Han San and the others feel as if they were going to be crushed beneath those words by the sky and the earth. One word was able to crush a mountain. Jian Bu Gu just peacefully stood where he was. He looked up at Fang Chi Yuan as he tried to attack him. He did not look as if he was going to dodge or fight back. He did not summon a gene race to combine with. Han Sen was just going to sit back and watch, but he saw Fang Chi Yuan's palm was just about to strike Jian Bu Gu's body. Jian Bu Gu did not evade. It looked as if he was happy to accept death. This shocked Han Sen. He sensed that Jian Bu Gu really was not going to fight back. He was just going to accept that hit. Fang Chi Yuan looked murderous and very excited. Jian Bu Gu was waiting for his strike. He really was not going to attack. Now, Fang Chi Yuan could erase an enemy for Wu Wei Dao Palace. Seeing the light text was going to crush Jian Bu Gu, it did not matter how famous he used to be. If he did not combine with a Jin race, there was no way he would be able to withstand that strike. Who knew a hand would suddenly appear and grab Jian Bu Gu's hand to pull him aside? Fang Chi Yuan hit empty space. Fang Chi Yuan frowned. He looked at the person who pulled Jian Bu Gu away. It was Han Sen, who had spent 3,000 king money to buy Jian Bu Gu. We did not agree on a price yet, and you were trying to kidnap him. You are very unreasonable. Han Sen smiled at Fang Chi Yuan. Chapter 3066, Evil Blood. Fang Chi Yuan was so fast that he could have killed Jian Bu Gu's. To him, this had been a very rare opportunity. If Jian Bu Gu had not decided to avoid fighting anyone for 20 years, even with an army of a thousand men, a thousand horses, and a sky full of battleships, he would not have been able to be beaten. Fang Chi Yuan knew that he had to take advantage of that opportunity to kill Jian Bu Gu now. His reputation in the Sky Faction would have greatly risen. It might have even been possible for him to one day become the leader of the Sky Faction if he achieved this. He felt no hesitation. Fang Chi Yuan's hands were like a mountain coming to suppress Han Senator. He was happy to kill anyone that dared prohibit him from ending Jian Bu Gu's life. The holy text on his hands flickered. It was like a hell of mountains was crashing down. Hansen did not feel like dodging. He combined with the blood ghost spirit. The gold-winged peacock king was still evolving. Small Cat's body, despite being near recovery, was not yet in full health. On top of that, it was not a gene race Hansen had properly claimed. It was not under his complete control. If he wanted to combine with it, it required Small Cat to be willing. The only gene race Han Sen was able to rely on was that of the blood ghost spirit. Some purple air came out of Han Sen's body. Suddenly, there was a monkey tail behind him. His hair turned purple, and he suddenly grew bigger. His body had a weird, purple light. It was burning like a purple fire. It made Han Sen's skin and hair look like a purple amethyst. Successfully combined with the blood ghost spirit. Got Jean to combine skill evil blood. Han Sen did not know what evil blood was. He felt as if some weird power surged through his innards. It followed his movements, trailing his punch. Ping. Han Sen's burning purple flame fist struck Fang Chi Yuan's mountain text. It resulted in an explosion. Han Sen stood his ground and did not move. The mountain text was broken by his fist. His fist did not stop there. It kept going for Fang Chi Yuan's hand. His hand, which looked like the trotter of a deer, was broken. It flew away and crushed a mountain. Blurk. Fang Chi Yuan forced himself off of the ground. His holy light flickered as blood seeped out of his mouth. He stared at Han Sen and Jian Bu Gu and said, I thought Jian Bu Gu was not afraid of death. You said you were going to keep the 20-year promise, but you are just a liar who tricks everybody. You said you would keep that oath and for 20 years and sever a connection to the Qin Kingdom. In fact, you have high-level people from the Qin Kingdom to protect you. Very good King Qin King's tutor Jian Bu Gu. Very good oath of 20 years. This is ridiculous. Jian Bu Gu looked cold. He did not want to argue with Fang Chi Yuan. Hansen could not watch it. He looked at him with disdain and said, I let you give me a new price but rejected the offer. Now, you start talking crap just because you failed to take him by force. Is Wu Wei Dao Palace always this lame? Shut up. How dare you, you crazy man. Underestimate the might of Wu Wei Dao Palace. Do you really think you can stop me, Fang Chi Yuan? 
I, who is of the seven hearts gene race, am very amazing. Being my enemy will make it so you cannot live or die. Fang Chi Yuan was going to use a god spirit blood pulse and summon another gene race to combine with. Some elites had multiple gene races to combine with. It was not a rare thing in the Seven Kingdoms. Fang Chi Yuan said he was the leader of the Seven Hearts Department. He said he had seven unique gene races and could combine them with seven gene races. That, however, was very rare. Ordinary people only had three to four gene races to combine with, and the gene races could not have conflicting elements. For example, a water element gene race was unable to combine with a fire element gene race. That was a prime example of there being a conflict that could harm one's body. Fang Chi Yuan looked horrible. He wanted to summon six more gene races to combine with, but he suddenly discovered that his communication with the god's spirit blood pulses was being cut off. He was no longer able to summon the gene races inside. What's going on? Fang Chi Yuan was in shock. He used his inner vision to take a look inside and see his god's spirit blood pulse mark. He noticed how it was marred with a layer of purple. There was some dirty, purple blood on his wounds. Suddenly, Fang Chi Yuan felt like his body was rather cold. He could not help but scream, it is the blood ghost spirit's evil blood. Impossible. I thought the blood ghost spirits went extinct when Emoli died. Why is the blood ghost spirit still here? Fang Chi Yuan looked at Han Sen's transformation. He really did look like the blood ghost spirit from legend. He was that special gene race that accompanied an assassin to kill a king by himself. What did you say? Hansen smiled at Fang Chi Yuan. Fang Chi Yuan's body trembled. He turned around and ran away. He was only able to combine with the holy wind white deer. If that was so, he knew he could not defeat Hansen in that condition. If he did not run, he was going to die right then and there. Damn it. I should have guessed that. There is no way Jian Bugu actually had a death wish. Fang Chi Yuan's heart cursed him profusely. You pretend to be a hard lad but then run off. Yet you have the audacity to think I am the lame one. Hansen coldly grunted. He used the metal pillar and aimed at Fang Chi Yuan. He thrust the end of the metal pillar and had it fly at Fang Chi Yuan like a missile. Hansen's power was so strong that the metal pillar reached Fang Chi Yuan's back in a second. Hearing that scary, break space sound, Fang Chi Yuan felt as if his heart had been tricked. He gathered up power and turned around. He used his fist to repel the metal pillar. There was a very loud noise. Fang Chi Yuan felt as if his fist was going to break. A strong power came before his chest. He was hit. He coughed up blood as he fell to the ground and cleaved a deep trench in the ground below. Fang Chi Yuan wanted to jump, but he saw Hansen was smiling in front of him. He was staring at him. Since when did the Qin Kingdom have a scary young man like this? Fang Chi Yuan regretted his actions. He had been spying on the Qin Kingdom for over ten years. He thought he knew about all the elites of the Qin Kingdom. He never thought someone as powerful as Hansen existed. In his memory, the Qin Kingdom did not have an elite like that. It was too late for him to regret things now. Hansen smiled at Fang Chi Yuan as he asked, Your name is Fang Chi Yuan, right? Kill me if that's what you want to do. Don't waste my time with talk. Fang Chi Yuan knew he was going to die. After all, his opponent had the very powerful gene race blood ghost spirit. He thought he had a relation with him only. Perhaps they had been assassins that conspired together. Escaping people like that was too difficult. Plus, he had been hit by evil blood. He was unable to summon a gene race and heavily injured. There was no way for him to run. Dying is easy. I only need to wiggle my finger to kill you a hundred times over. If you want to live, I can make that happen. Hansen was not mad as he spoke to Fang Chi Yuan. Do you want me to betray Wu Wei Dao Palace? Impossible. Fang Chi Yuan stood his ground on that matter. I'm not from the Qin Kingdom, so your betrayal of Wu Wei Dao Palace does not benefit me, Hansen said. What do you mean? Fang Chi Yuan was frozen. He thought Hansen was an elite that belonged to the Qin Kingdom and was assigned to protect Jian Bugu. Now, Hansen was saying he was not from the Qin Kingdom. He did not know what to think anymore. You can easily keep your life, Hansen said with a laugh. I quite like your holy when white deer. I need a mount. If you give it to me, I will let you live. You. You cannot trick me. You want to take my Jin race and kill me after. You are a liar. Fang Chi Yuan did not believe Hansen. I told you I am a normal businessman with standards. I have no relationship with that man. 
I just bought him on a whim. If you gave me a fair price, I would have sold him. There was no need for any of this fighting. You did not believe me then, and you still don't believe me. It is hard for me to resist the urge to kill you. Hansen sighed and walked up to Fong Chi Yuan. I did not want to murder you. If you want to die so badly, I guess I will have to help you out. Seeing Hansen approach, Fong Chi Yuan quickly shouted, Hold on. I will give you the holy one white deer. But will you really spare my life? Upon hearing that, Li Bingya looked grim. She was one of the leaders of Wu Wei Dao Palace. She was not happy to see one of her friends look like such a wimp. Fortunately, she was wearing a mask, so no one saw her face. Chapter 3067 Getting Upset Over Money Fang Chi Yuan eventually decided to concede. He agreed to give Hans and the Holy Wen White Deer. A tamed gene race could be transferred between people that had a god's spirit blood pulse, but being able to transfer did not guarantee it could be used. If the god's spirit blood pulse was not compatible with the gene race, even if one had the gene race, one could not combine with it. If one was to force a combination, it might harm one's body. Hansen tried to use his Sea of Souls to receive the holy when White Deer Fong Chi Yuan gave him. The results surprised him. The Sea of Souls quickly received the holy when White Deer. After that, people would not have been suspicious of him being from another world. At the same time, Hansen heard an announcement play in his head. Got God Class Gene Race Holy when White Deer. Hansen checked out the information on the holy when White Deer. The results surprised him. Holy when White Deer. God class gene race adult. This holy when white deer was an adult. It was not in an ultimate body, which was not like what Mr. Yang told him. An adult god class gene race was not a bad thing to obtain. It was enough for Hansen to use as a mount to get around. Of course, Hansen wanted the holy when white deer not solely for more than just being a mount. He just did not want to kill Fang Chi Yuan yet. Keeping Fang Chi Yuan was going to be useful. Can I leave now? Fang Chi Yuan gnashed his teeth as he spoke. The seven gene races were his life. Now, Hansen had taken one. He really hated that. Of course, unless you want to stay and have dinner with us, Hansen said with a laugh. What about the evil blood in me? Fang Chi Yuan asked. I only said I wouldn't kill you, Hansen coldly said. I did not say I would get rid of the evil blood I pumped into you. If you want my help with this, give me another gene race that is on the same level as this holy one white deer. Either that or a gene egg. You. Fang Chi Yuan was very mad, but he did not explode and reveal it. He did not keep asking Han Sen to remove the evil blood inside him. Fang Chi Yuan did not dare turn around. He just looked at Han Sen and retreated. He walked far away and then started running like a lunatic. Seeing that Han Sen was not chasing after him, Fang Chi Yuan felt relieved. He also felt great regret. Is he really not an elite sent by the Qin Kingdom to protect Jian Bugu? If that was all real, I should have just bought Jian Bugu. If I did that, none of this would have happened to me. Fang Chi Yuan did not want to go back. He had to find a way to remove the evil blood that plagued him. If he was unable to use his gene race, he felt very unsafe. Fortunately, evil blood is not a gene combined skill that can kill you in any short amount of time. I will wait until I recover. Then, I will come back for him. Fang Chi Yuan madly looked at Han Sen and the other people. He continued running away in a hurry. Han Sen summoned the holy when white deer out. He saw a very strong, holy looking white deer appear before him. The deer's antlers looked like crystal and jade. The holy when white deer was a little bigger than a horse. Two or three people were easily able to sit on it. Old Yang and you too, the mother and daughter, can sit on the holy when white deer. Han Sen wanted to travel faster but three of them were commoners who did not have a gene race. They walked way too slowly. But Mr. Young, the mother, and daughter would not dare sit atop the holy one white deer. Mr. Young said, Mr., you should be the one to sit on it. A master should never walk while the subordinates ride. If people saw that, they would think we were very rude subordinates. Hansen tried to convince them otherwise, but he failed. He stopped talking and hopped on it. He spoke to the little girl, Yu Yu, and her mother, Jiang Shur, and said, allow you to sit with me. Otherwise, you guys are too slow, and I cannot wait that long. Jiang Shur nodded and lifted Yu Yu onto the back of the white deer. Yu Yu was only three or four years old. She had a chicken's heart. Hansen put her in his arms, but her body kept shaking. She was shaking like a little cat. 
Because Mr. Yang and Jiang sure could not walk fast, even though Hansen had a great mount, they traveled slowly. Li Bingyu summoned a gene race that looked like a black wolf. She rode next to Han Sen but felt a flurry of mixed emotions. Li Bingyu thought, what is going on? Why would Han Sen have that blood ghost spirit? Inside the stone palace, was there a blood ghost spirit gene egg? She would have never thought that Han Sen had actually managed to punch the adult blood ghost spirit back into being an egg the few of them reached Qin King City. They traveled to Qin Shou's old house, but Han Sen was disappointed. That place had become a modern-day tourist spot. It had nothing to do with the real Qin Xiao and his sister. The buildings had obviously not been built during the time Qin Xiao was alive. Qin Xiao's era was too long ago. The buildings were probably only a thousand years old. They could not have been from when Qin Xiao was alive. That trip to Turin Planet ended up disappointing Han Senator. He was unable to find out anything about Qin Xiao, and he did not find anything out about Qin Wanner either. It looks like I have to go to the Qin Kingdom's capital. Now, that is the only place where I can likely find a lead. Hansen traveled around that city for a few days before deciding to go to the Qin Kingdom's capital next. Hansen was most depressed about the fact that he did not have enough money to buy or charter a ship. They had been spending all of Mr. Yang's savings, and Mr. Yang was not a rich man. They sold some Jin eggs, but the money was almost all gone. Jian Bugu, Jian Shur and Yi were so poor that they had nothing to contribute. Hansen borrowed some money off Ghost Kill to pay their travel expenses. They stepped onto an airship that would take them to the Qin Kingdom's capital. Hansen thought, after going to the Qin Kingdom's capital, we will have to spend a lot more money. I do not know when I will next find the lead I am looking for, but I cannot keep borrowing money. He wanted to know how he could rake in the big bucks to do well in the Qin Kingdom. He wouldn't be able to achieve anything without a lot of money. Killing gene races or finding gene eggs was the fastest way to earn money, but Hansen was not interested in doing that. To him, it was a waste of time. Hansen kept on thinking. He decided that once he reached the Qin Kingdom's capital, he would open a shop that sold gene eggs. With the power of the Xian Yellow Sutra, he was likely to earn quite a bit of money. Fang Chi Yuan had such power, and the Qin Kingdom Palace has more elites. With my current situation, forcing my way into the palace to find Qin Wanler's body will likely be impossible. I will have to sneak in. The first thing Hansen thought of was Qin Bai, the leader's stupid son. Hansen gave up on the idea to look for Qin Bai. If Qin Bai was a king, perhaps it would have been worth asking him. Qin Bai was just a crown prince. Hansen did not have much authority, and people would have merely treated him like a subordinate. It would have been hard to quit the crown prince's employ. Let's just open a shop to have some comfy days where I can sketch this out properly. Although Hansen was in a rush, it was something he knew he had to take his time with. Chapter 3068 Omen Old liar, I am hungry. On the streets, there was a pretty little girl who looked like a doll. She was pulling the sleeves of the old man next to her. Her eyes were wide open as she looked at him. She made sure to make herself appear extra pitiable. Her face looked like she was starving, and she had a lack of clothes. It was like she was abused. It made others want to take pity on her and cry when they heard the stories she told. The corners of the old man's eyes twitched. A half a day ago, Bauer ate the most expensive meal in the most expensive restaurant and had emptied his wallet of every penny it contained. Even he was starting to believe it. He wanted to smack his mouth and curse himself for being useless. He could not even raise a little girl well. My little kid, ever since you've been with me, your mouth has not stopped moving the old man depressingly said. With the way you eat, even if there was a mountain of gold and a mountain of silver, it'd be eaten by you. How did that Hansen used to raise you? Dad would not let me starve. If you are saying you cannot afford to take care of me, I'm going back. Bauer looked grumpy. She turned around, ready to leave. Little kid, I concede. I will take you someplace nice to eat, the old man said while dragging Bauer with him. Old liar, don't you dare try and lie to me. Bauer squinted at the old man. I would lie to everyone else, yes, but you? The old man asked. You just need to wait here for a bit. I will take you to eat something very nice and spicy. You can eat whatever you want there. I promise you you'll be full. You are very nice, old granddad. Bauer smiled a lot. She held the old man's hand and behaved very cutely. This girl. It does not make sense. How could she have been raised to this age? 
How did that bastard Hansen grow you so big? The old man was speechless. By the way, old liar, I thought you ran out of money. Bauer looked at the old man and blinked as she spoke to him. Eating food does not require money all the time. Bauer was holding a flag while he walked across the street. He went searching for something. Not long later, he bent over and picked up a stone that was sharp and fist-sized. He pulled Bauer along as he kept walking. When they came to a T-junction, he looked to his left and right. He then put the sharp stone on the corner that turned. Bauer blinked and asked, Can we get money to eat this way? Of course, tasty stuff will come here right now, the old man said. He pulled Bauer forward to walk with him. Not long later, they stopped near the street. He put down the flag and placed a yellow cloth on the ground. He pulled out a chair and sat on the cloth. He closed his eyes and rested. Old liar, is this going to work? Bauer waited for a while, but nothing tasty appeared. Do not rush. It is on its merry way. The old man's eyes did not open. He looked calm as he spoke to her. After a while, the street suddenly had chickens flying and dogs jumping. They saw a guy riding a gold, big crab jean race. It was skittering around the street, making the street all dirty. Seeing this big, gold crab that looked like a tank come close to them, the old man's eyes and lips suddenly became very thin. He then blew out air and made a strange noise. When the big gold crab heard that sound, its crazy moving body came to a halt. The person atop the beast looked rather excited. The gold, big crab came to a stop. It was a sudden one, so the man was thrown right off. It looked like a dog eating sh asterisk t. His head went in front of the fortune teller old man with a shock. The old man looked at the young man who had fallen with his ass sticking up and said, Old man, I have seen your forehead go dark. Did your head suffer a stroke of misfortune? Today, you will be suffering a curse. The young man picked himself up off the ground. He wiped the blood off his nose, looked at the old man, and coldly said, Old man, how dare you to start talking to me? Do you have any idea who I am? After that, the young man reached out his hand to punch the old man. The old man did not move. He coldly said, If I am not mistaken, you just experience changes that can make a sad man very happy. You have an opportunity before you. When the young man heard that, he was shocked. The fist that was going to strike out was lowered. Old man, who sent you here? How could you know everything about me? The young man stared at the fortune-telling old man and checked him out. The fortune-telling old man shook his head. I do want to save people, but people are always so ignorant. Never mind. After that, the fortune-telling old man picked up his shop. He took the little girl with him as he left. In the meantime, he said to himself, God is jealous of geniuses. What a shame. Hang on. What did you mean, old man? At least, tell me. Otherwise, I am going to break your old teeth. Then, you will never talk crap again. The young man reached out his hand and stopped the two from leaving. The fortune-telling old man sighed and said, I am afraid you will not believe me even if I do tell you. How about this? I will give you one tidbit. You do not have to pay for it. If it is useful, it will be a pleasure of mine. If it is not useful, neither of us loses a thing. After that, the old man took out a rope and gave it to the young man. What do you mean? The young man accepted the rope with suspicion. It seemed to be an ordinary rope. It was less than nine feet long with small threading. If it was not for the fortune-telling man telling him what happened, with that young man's attitude, he would have hanged the old man with the rope. The old man said, put the rope around your waist and put the other on the gene race. Then, you will find out. Fine. I will see what you are up to. If this is a waste of time, I am going to come back and break your stupid mouth. Someone come here and keep an eye on this old man. Because of what the young man shouted, a few big men appeared. They prohibited the old man and the young girl from leaving. I have stuff to do. If it does not work, when I come back, you are very dad. After the young man said that, he jumped atop the crab's back. Following the instructions given to him by the old man, he tied one end of the rope to his waist and the other end onto the gold crab. He took the crab and sought to leave. Hang on. Pull the rope one foot and seven inches shorter. The fortune-telling old man stopped the young man. The young man did not really believe him. No matter what happened today, no one would have been able to see it. There was no way for others to know. The fortune-telling old man spoke correctly, which had made him scared. It was hard to believe, which was why he thought he should give it a go. The young man pulled the rope shorter and thought, after I am done, 
If this stupid rope does not do anything, I am going to break his mouth. Just as he just tied up the rope, the gold crab turned around and started to spin extremely fast. The young man fell from the crab's back. The young man's eyes opened wide. He saw himself almost fall on the ground. His waist felt tight. He was only half a foot away from the ground hanging by the rope. The young man had a closer look. He quickly broke out into a cold sweat. There was a sharp rock five inches away from his left eye. If the rope had not pulled him when he fell, he could have been blinded. He thought about the consequences of the rope. The young man's legs went soft. He had a cold sweat. He felt like it was too close. A few young men surrounded the old man and girl. Many people saw this. The young man, who had gone around the corner, had come back. He was running and screaming, Old. Fairy. Old Fairy. Old Fairy, you are like a god. Chapter 3069, 8 Sound Buck. Hansen and the group walked before the gates of Big Chin. Capital. It was half a month later by now. The Big Chin Kingdom's lands were too vast. Even with subspace travel and slipspace jumps, it took them half a month to reach the capital from Turin Planet. They had even swapped ships twice. Is this Big Chin capital? Mr. Yang and the others were shocked by what they saw ahead of them. The whole of Big Chin capital was not built on a planet. It was built on a giant, man-made space station. The space station was bigger than Turin Planet. When looking at it from afar, it was like a hunk of jade floating in space. Li Bingyu was a bit excited. From what she saw, Han Sen was there in the capital with the need to seek out Qin Bai. When they met, her chance to strike would finally arrive. Li Bingyu laughed and said, In the Seven Kingdoms, only the Qin Kingdom's capital is not built on the surface of a planet. This jade wall city is what Qin's people are the proudest of. They were built by the first King Qin. Now, billions of years have passed by. Despite the eons, fraught with war and natural disasters, it has weathered everything thrown at it and runs without a hitch. It holds the lives of tens of billions of the kingdom's civilians and nobles. The construction of this was a miraculous feat, and certainly one of the greatest across the history of the universe. Was this Qin Shou's work? Hansen quietly looked at the miraculous Jade Wall City. Jian Bugu smiled and said, Other kings finished this miracle because King Qin powers were so strong. They could almost conquer the universe. It is not like the other six kingdoms were going to be destroyed, but they must pay taxes to my country every year for the relationships to remain stable. I do not think our country could build this jade wall city anew. It is a shame that when the Qin kingdom was in its best shape, the true king vanished. Future king Qin's lacked what it took to conquer the universe. Hansen could not help but be complimentary. Qin Shou really was a great man. It is not hard to practice his skills to the best they can be. I can do that. But Qin Shou reached the maximum of his personal power and earned governance of a giant kingdom. He was a very successful person. I do not think I could do the things he has done. After entering the Jade Wall City, Hansen realized he had been a bit too naive. He was unable to open a shop. With the little amount of money they had, he could not even find them a place to live. In that expensive place, the Qin Kingdom capital, to even rent a space as small as a bathroom would cost them 10000 a month. Hansen looked at Jian Bu Gu and asked, Mr. Jian, in this Jade Wall City, where do nobles hunt Jin races? Jian Bu Gu replied, The Jade Wall City has many teleportation devices. You can teleport to the planets that are nearest the Jade Wall City. On those planets, there are many land pulses and Jin races. Hansen nodded. He thought about going after some Jean eggs first to gather money and then open up his shop. I do not think I can open a shop. Let me make an online shop. After settling down, Hansen had Mr. Yang be in charge of the online shop. He prepared to go to another planet to get Jean's eggs for stock. Li Bingyu said she wanted to follow Hansen, but her request to tag along was rejected. There is no way he is going to have an online shop here, Li Bingyu coldly said to herself with a cackle. This must just be him starting off. His final goal here in the city must be to seek out and locate Qin Bai. She knew Hansen had no money. If he didn't gather Jean eggs to sell to the people of Jade Wall City online, they would likely starve. The capital was not like other places. It was where all the shops were. To be able to sell Jean eggs there, it was usually only big nobles from fancy factions that had the chops to do so. They had land pulses to harvest. Running such an establishment alone was tough. Plus, Hansen was only opening an online shop. 
He did not have the money to advertise his wares or establish a physical presence. He did not have a stable stream of resources either. To develop and make good on his intent, it was going to be a tough road. He would have been lucky not to lose money. Li Bingyu thought she would see Han Sen's online shop shut down very soon. If Han Sen came asking her for money, she would tell him her pockets were just as empty. That would likely push Han Sen to meet up with Qin Bai. Han Sen was looking up info on the Jade Wall City. He checked out the online shops that sold Jean eggs, and he got an idea on which sorts of Jean eggs sold well. When Hansen arrived at the quantum teleportation system, he was so shocked that his mouth opened wide. The teleportation device was just like the ones in the sanctuary. Does that mean the teleportation devices in the sanctuaries actually came from the universe of kingdoms? Hansen's face looked very weird. He knew that the Alliance's ability to create teleportation devices came from a technological solution derived from another civilization. In the past, he thought it was crystallized technology. Seeing these teleportation devices, he noticed they were very similar. It was hard to believe there was not a connection. After paying the teleportation fee, Hansen had a very familiar feeling. He arrived at a planet called Guyo. Hansen had conducted some research on this place. Planet Guyo had some very weird gene races. The gene races were not hard to find, but the gene eggs were hard to locate. There was a Viscount gene race called Spirit Evil Eye. Its level was not high, but its combined skill could provide humans with X-ray vision. The Spirit Evil Eye's gene egg price was higher than Earl gene egg prices, but none were selling it. Of course, Hansen did not plan on getting some Spirit Evil Eye gene eggs to sell. He thought the people who wanted the gene eggs solely did for perverted reasons. Second, it was very hard to find the spirit evil eyes. I will just get myself one to play with. Hansen kept thinking as he walked. The holy one white deer was too eye-catching. There were many people around, so Hansen did not ride it. He just walked slowly. He kept walking, trying to check out Planet Guya. With the information he had gathered online, not far from the west side, there was a place called Night Cry Valley. There were Viscount gene races that were native to the region. It was a gene race called Eight Sound Buck. On this hunt, Hanston was on the prowl for an Eight Sound Buck. Just like Spirit Evil Eye, the Eight Sound Bug's gene eggs were very rare. They sold for a high price. The Eight Sound Bug's fighting power was weak, and the combined skill Eight Sound did not do much either. Regardless, it made the music and voice of a human better. The universe of kingdoms was not all based around fighting. They had culture and entertainment. Therefore, that era had many musicians. A lot of young people wished to become a singer or idol. That was especially true of the nobles, who really enjoyed such forms of entertainment. An eight-sound bug was very important for singers. There were not many gene races with that type. There were ones at a higher level, but ordinary people could not afford them. The gene egg of an eight-sound bug was very rare so their demand was higher. Night Cry Valley's eight sound bugs were adults. They could not be tamed and combined, so no one was there capturing the eight sound bugs. Chapter 3070, Night Cry Valley Hansen thought Night Cry Valley would not have had any people there for that place had eight sound bugs. The area had no land pulses, and eight sound bugs were difficult to catch. No one should have been there. Shortly after Hansen entered the valley, he saw a woman, her face was covered with a green veil. She was sitting atop a large rock in Night Cry Valley. Her eyes were closed. It looked as if she was resting. Hansen saw her face and understood she was there to capture eight sound bugs too. The eight sound bugs only appeared in the valley at night. She was obviously waiting for dark. He believed no one should have been there, and so did the woman. She was just as surprised to see Hansen arrive. Although he could not see her face, and she was wearing a very large robe that hid her body shape. Her eyes looked like autumn water. People were bound to believe that she was a very pretty person. Hansen thought, maybe it's just her eyes that look good. Perhaps the rest of her face is ugly and weird. I don't see another reason as to why she might be hiding her face. If Hansen knew who that woman was, he would have understood why she did her face as she such. She was one of the three big idols in the Big Qin Kingdom. She was called Feng Fei Fei and she was titled the Phoenix Singer. In the Big Qing Kingdom, she was very famous. She had many fans. If she did not hide her face when she went out, there would be traffic everywhere. The Big Qing Kingdom's idols were not ordinary stars or celebrities. 
Back in the day, King Qin singer Zhong Li Qing sung one song and scared off Zhao Kingdom's ten battleships that sought to invade planet Chimo. It was the strongest one back then. Of course, that was because Zhong Li Qing had the ultimate gene race called Absolute Sound. The three big idols were not as famous as Zhong Li Qing, but they were only a little away from being that widely known. They were all elites who had god class sonic element gene races. They were not just some singers or stars. In the universe of kingdoms, without the aid of powerful gene races, one was not able to reach the top in any way. Every profession's top class people made the scariest elites. Feng Fei Fei had come to Night Cry Valley for an eight sound bug. The eight sound bugs that had already hatched could not be perfectly tamed, but they could be used to create gene medicine that could moisturize the throat. For a singer, that was very good stuff. Of course, at Feng Fei Fei's level, any ordinary eight sound bug would not suit her. Before, she heard about Night Cry Valley possessing a rare, mutant eight sound bug. She wanted to have a look around and check out the validity of the claim. So, she came to Night Cry Valley in search of that special eight sound bug. Seeing Hansen arrive in Night Cry Valley, Feng Fei Fei was not too bothered. Even if Hansen was there to catch eight sound bugs, she did not believe he had the chops to beat her. Plus, she wanted a mutant eight sound buck. She was not after any ordinary type of eight sound buck. Feng Fei Fei did not mind Hansen being there, but Hansen did mind Feng Fei Fei's presence. With an outsider there, he was not able to freely use the Xin Yellow Sutra. If an outsider saw him turn a gene race into an egg, people would likely capture him for research. As Hansen kept looking at Feng Fei Fei, he came to understand she was not the type of person to mess around with. At least, that was just the feeling he was getting. He did not have proof that was the case. Seeing Feng Fei Fei close her eyes again, Hansen walked past her. He kept heading into the deeper recesses of Night Cry Valley. He wanted to keep his distance from her so she could not see what he would be using. Normal people who were good at singing should have also had good hearing. Feng Fei Fei was one of the good ones, and her body had a unique gene race. Although she did not open her eyes, Hansen's movements were in her ears. In her mind, she pictured the scene of him and his movements. Seeing Hansen not recognize her and walk straight into the valley, Feng Fei Fei felt greatly relieved. If she had been recognized, she would have been troubled. She would have been unable to get the mutant eight sound bug as she had hoped. If other people knew that the top singer and idol Feng Fei Fei was fighting for an eight sound bug with a commoner, even if she was there first, people would be talking about it a great deal. Feng Fei Fei was not afraid, but it was still something that made her not feel very good. In fact, Feng Fei Fei thought too much. Hansen did not know about the mutant eight sound buck. He was only there to catch an ordinary eight sound buck. Hansen walked into the deeper parts of Night Cry Valley. Although it was just nighttime, and the sky was not too dark, the further he walked into the valley, the darker the valley became. Inside the valley, there were no big trees. There were just some small plants around, but the grass and the leaves were very long. They could have been a whole three feet tall. The reason the place was called Night Cry Valley was that the gene races there mostly appeared at night. One was unable to see them in the daytime. So, Hansen walked deeper into the valley to find gene races. Strangely, however, he found none. He walked to the farthest point of the valley and reached a dead end. He decided to have a mosey about. He was far away from that woman now. He no longer saw her, and the area around him had grass that was three feet high. If the woman did not run there, she would not see what Hansen was doing. In the deepest part of the valley, there was a pool with very clear water. It was not big. It was just half the size of a basketball court. The water was clear. He saw some duck egg-like stones beneath the surface. Near the pool, there were some large stones. Hansen sat atop the biggest one. He was able to see in six different directions and hear in eight directions. He would have time to aim. The sky went dark. Before the sun had completely dipped into the nether, Hansen heard it to see see sound. It was something Hansen was quite familiar with. It was the sound of a cricket. Hansen followed where the sound came from, but he failed to find the cricket. He discovered that the sound was coming from a crack in the stone near the pool. Hansen was just going to have a look. He wanted to see if that was a gene race but his eyes froze. He saw movement in the water. Hansen held his body stiff and peered into the water. Although the light in the valley was minimal, Hansen had a good pair of eyes that enabled him to see the very bottom of the pool. He saw a weird creature slowly moving. 
The thing looked like a gecko. It was very big. It was one foot long. Its body was dark green, and it was in the water. It was camouflaging itself in the moss of the water, so it was hard to notice. That big, dark green, big gecko was twisting its body through the water to climb. It was going to the stone gap that had the tsetse sound. The big gecko emerged from the water, stared at the stone gap, and climbed inside. It was like a toxic snake that ate people. The dark green body did not have scales, but it had many small lumps. It looked like a toad's bumps. Seeing the big gecko come before the stone gap, the stone gap flashed with a red color. Something emerged from it. Chapter 3071 Cricket Cave A black-bodied, red-headed big cricket came out of the gap in the stone. It battled the big, dark green gecko. The cricket was only the size of a fist. It was much smaller than the big gecko, but it was very fast. It was not at a disadvantage while it fought. The black and green, the two shadows, battled on the banks of the pool. The fight was intense to watch. Hansen found it a fun spectacle to view. The levels of the two gene races were not very high. They were viscounts at the most, but their methodology of battle was brutally intense. It was like watching crickets fight. Even though sparrows are small, they're still meat. I will wait until they're almost finished, then I will turn them into eggs. I should be able to earn a bit of money when I bring them back with me. I will at least be able to sort out my rent problem. Hansen was having fun watching this. Suddenly, the toxic lump on the gecko exploded. Green juice squirted everywhere. It was like a blossoming flower spraying all over the cricket. The shell on the cricket's body looked as if it had been sprayed with acid. It emitted white smoke. It looked as if it was being corroded. The cricket went to seed sea and fell to the ground. The gecko saw that its attack had worked, so it approached its enemy. The cricket struggled, trying to make its way back to the stone gap. The gecko's juice was far too toxic. Before the cricket was able to climb into the stone gap, the shell on its body was already being corroded. The blighter turned blurry and disgusting. It was not going to last. The cricket suddenly looked like it came back to life. Its back legs used some hidden power to make its bloody body leap and avoid the gecko's tongue. It entered the stone gap. It was injured badly, so it is useless for it to go back inside the cave. The gecko does not have to do anything. It will turn into bloody water soon enough. Hansen knew now was the time for him to act, but his pupils suddenly got small. The gecko was in front of the stone gap. Suddenly, a cold light beamed out of it. Before the big, dark green gecko reacted, it was turned into a stone. Huh? Does that cricket have the ability to petrify? Why did it not use it earlier? Hansen was very confused. Before he thought any more about it, Hansen worried that the cricket was heavily injured. If it had turned into blood water, no matter how strong his Xian Yellow Sutra was, he could not turn a pile of mush into an egg. Hansen flashed and came before the elusive stone gap. He cast his Xian Yellow Sutra to kick up a red light that struck the petrified, dark green, big gecko. Although his body was petrified, under the power of the Xian Yellow Sutra, it still devolved. It quickly turned into a dark green egg that was the size of a pigeon egg. He held on to that gecko egg. Hansen reached out his hand to punch the rock. He wanted to blow up the stone gap and see what the cricket was doing inside. After Hansen unleashed his punch, only a few cracks manifested in the stone. He was unable to break it. Huh? What is going on? Hansen was shocked. His punching power was scary. Forget about stone, but he was able to break an ingot of pure platinum into many pieces with the strength he put into his punches. Now, all he had managed to do was leave a few measly marks on the stone. Clearly, there was something funky about the stone. Hansen saw the stone gap had no movement. No petrified light came out of it either. So, he kept on punching. When he unleashed his fourth punch, the rock broke. The gap was now the size of a human head. Hansen looked into the cave and was quite surprised. It was a cave about the size of a bathtub. There was no cricket. There was only a pool of blood. There was an 80% to 90% chance it was the body of the cricket. What is that? Hansen looked at the bloody water. The stone cave was very humid and had a heavy layer of moss. The blood water seemed to be corrosive. It had started to corrode the moss, revealing the stone underneath. The rock looked very flat. It looked as if it had been made by someone. There were also some carvings there. Underneath the blood and the moss, it was not very clear. Hansen wiped away the moss. He quickly discovered that beneath the stone cave there was a stone board that had special symbols on it. 
Hansen broke the rocks around to get the stone board out, but the stone board was around four feet long and one foot wide. He did not know how long it was and could not get it out. Hansen needed to be patient. He broke the stone board around and noticed the stone board was only half a foot thick. It was gray in color. It did not look like the granite around. After being busy for a while, Hansen finally got the stone board out of the ground. When he pulled out the whole stone board, he noticed it was not a stone board. It was a stone box. Hansen tried to open the stone box, but there was no reaction from the box's keyhole. He used his hands like a knife to strike it. He left a few white marks on the stone box. This stone box is so weird. Hansen thought it was still early enough that the eight sound bugs were not yet ready to appear, so he took the stone box out and went to check out the cave again. He found nothing else. He used the stones to rebuild and hide the cave he had just discovered. Hansen thought that petrifying light probably did not come from the cricket. After all, it did not look like a stone element gene race. If that was not it, then it has to be this stone box. When I dug up the stone box, after all this time, why hasn't the stone box done anything? Although Hansen thought he was very handsome, he did not think he was handsome enough for the stone box to treat him differently. What is the reason? Hansen looked at the top of the stone box. There was still blood water the cricket had left behind. It had already dried up. Hansen's heart suddenly jumped. This thing is not going to react after seeing blood, is it? Although Hansen thought that way, he was not going to use his own blood for the testing. He looked around planning to kill a gene race and see if he could use the gene race's blood to activate the stone box. Ding. Hansen suddenly heard a sound that was like a harp string being plucked. It came from inside a bush. Hansen looked into the sky. It was dark. A moon was now above the mountain. Not long later, Hansen heard a harp sound in the vicinity. It was like someone was playing an old instrument. It sounded very nice. Under the night sky of the valley, it sounded very mysterious. Hansen held his breath. His body was like it was petrified and unmoving. The eight sound bugs could not see anything, but they were very sensitive to sound. Insects that were a few miles away could not hide from them. If people wanted to catch an eight sound bug, they could not make a sound. Even the jump of a shocked heart would alert them. He needed to wait until they emerged from the ground and hit them when they were nearby. He could not claim another if they escaped underground. Hansen controlled his body. He sat where he was like a stone. Not long later, from out of the bush, he saw a white light emerge from the leaves. In the nighttime, it looked like a firefly. Chapter 3072, Mutant 8 Sound Buck Although Hansen had watched a video online about the eight sound bugs, compared to what he was seeing in real life, he was given a nasty shock. A butterfly, which was as small as a fairy, suddenly flickered like a white light that should have been the bug's body. Aside from its body just being a white slate and several wriggling tentacles, it was like a human. That thing was sort of like a mini butterfly. In the arms of the eight sound bug, it was holding an instrument that looked like a lute. It did, however, have eight strings. The eight sound bug's fingers were playing the instrument to make many crunching sounds. The eight sound bugs played very good music, but Hansen did not have the time to admire it. He was going to use his Xi'an Yellow Sutra to get rid of it. He suddenly heard the sound of another instrument. This one was amazing. Did more eight bug sounds come? Hansen stopped moving. If he went to disturb the creature, the other eight sound bugs would stop coming. Of course, not long later, a glowing thing emerged from the bush. It was a collection of eight sound bugs. They played several different instruments in harmony with each other. There was not a single note played out of place. It was like a wondrous musical festival. Many beautiful eight sound bugs were dancing out of the bushes. More and more of them appeared. Not long later, there were a dozen eight sound bugs. Hansen knew that Night Cry Valley had lots of eight sound bugs, but he did not think there would be that many. It was just a small area, yet there were at least a dozen eight sound bugs. Ding! The sound of another instrument was heard. This time, the instrument was different from the last one. When Hansen heard this instrument, his heart felt a shock. He could not help but be entranced with an acoustic lust for it. In fact, after the instrument's sound was heard, the dozen eight sound bugs and their instruments came to a close. Hansen looked to where the instrument came from. He saw there was a bunch of silver light flying around the spring water. It was an eight sound bug glowing with silver light. He was not sure where it flew from, but it was now above the water. It kept flying around, playing the magical eight string lute in its hands. 
Ordinary eight sound bugs were white, but this eight sound bug was a light silver color. Even the lute looked like it was made of silver jade. Its eight strings glowed with a silver light. The very small fingers plucked and pranced gently across them. It was like the sound of a mountain spring playing in Han Sen's ears. It made his heart feel as if it was being cleansed. A mutant eight sound bug? Hansen felt quite happy about this. A mutant eight sound bug was an incredibly rare find. He did not expect to find a mutant eight sound bug there. Without hesitation, Hansen's body exploded. He was like a shadow that came before the mutant eight sound bug. His hand carried a red light as he struck the mutant eight sound bug. Hansen was just a normal guy. He did not know how to appreciate music. Grabbing the mutant eight sound bug was more realistic. The mutant eight sound bug was only Earl class. It was a little stronger than the average Viscount 8 sound buck. Before Hansen, it was extremely weak. It was battered by the red light in a jiffy. Hansen did not watch the result of his strike. His body flashed. He suddenly threw 10 additional punches, resulting in a dozen 8 sound bugs being struck by Hansen's fist of fury. Including that mutant 8 sound bug, all the 8 sound bugs devolved into white gene eggs. The mutant eight sound bug only lasted a few seconds before it was reduced to a gene egg as well. With this godly skill, I do not have to worry about not having any money to buy nice and spicy food. Hansen put a dozen of those eight sound bug eggs in his hands. They rolled around in his palm like pearls. He felt really happy about this result. While he was feeling this joy, the sound of torn space was suddenly heard. He turned around and saw the woman he had seen earlier in the valley. It was the woman wearing that green veil to hide her face. She hurried forth with white wings flapping, flying there from afar. Feng Fei Fei had been waiting at the center of the valley. When the mutant eight sound bug appeared, she wanted to be the first to spot and catch it. When the mutant eight sound bug instrument was near the pool, Feng Fei Fei arrived there in haste. She tried to be as fast as she could be, but she was too late. When she arrived, she only saw Han Senator he had already put the eggs away. Feng Fei Fei broke space and arrived. She did not see a mutant eight sound bug around. By only seeing Hansen, she knew something was wrong. That is quite a coincidence. I heard the mutant eight sound bug's acoustics echo through the valley a couple of times before. Why did it appear next to this pond this time? Feng Fei Fei looked around, unable to spy the presence of a single eight sound bug. There was only Hansen beside the pool. She guessed that Hansen might have already killed the mutant eight sound bug and felt grossly disappointed. Hansen looked at her, but he did not say a word. He turned and walked out of the valley. Feng Fei Fei broke space and came before him. There have been too many big movements, so the rest of the eight sound bugs were likely hiding in fear. They were done for the night. They probably were not going to show up for another few days. Feng Fei Fei thought about it, but decided to stop Hansen, who was on the cusp of leaving. Mister, did you hunt the mutant eight sound bug? What mutant eight sound bug? I have never heard of such a thing. Hansen's face did not look as if it was gasping or anything. He said that and quickly went outside the valley. Feng Fei Fei was enraged. If Hansen told her he did not catch a mutant eight sound bug and said it had escaped, she could have accepted that. She knew she had heard the instrument of the mutant eight sound bug from her position in the valley. Hansen had been where the sound had come from. It was obvious was lying about the creature. Please, do not misunderstand, Feng Fei Fei said. If you are willing to sell me the mutant eight sound bug, I am willing to pay you twice the going rate in the market. I am not selling it. This time, Hansen answered with certainty. The mutant eight sound bug had become an egg. Feng Fei Fei would be suspicious if she saw it. The gene egg would be worth a lot more than just double the price. It was a rare mutant gene egg. Even if its level was not too high, he could still sell it for 10 times the price. Plus, with a rare gene egg, Hansen wanted to put it on his online shop to draw attention and fame. Feng Fei Fei was very disappointed, but this had already happened. She had no choice but to give up. Hansen carried the stone box with him. He had reached the center of the Night Cry Valley by this point. Suddenly, he saw a handsome man riding a white unicorn arrive. He was wearing white jade armor. No matter how much the price, I am buying the mutant eight sound buck. Give me the sum. The man sat atop the unicorn like some proud man, looking down on the earth and Hansen. Mr. Jean, what are you doing here? Feng Fei Fei, who was leaving, frowned upon seeing the handsome man. I heard, Miss Fei Fei, that you came to Night Cry Valley alone, 
Mr. Jean said with a smile. I was afraid you might be in danger, so I followed. Thank you, Mr. Jean. Fong Fei Fei was not happy about this, but she did not let it show. It is my pleasure. Mr. Jean displayed a charming smile. He looked at Han Sin and said, Mr. Fei Fei requires a mutant eight sound buck. Just tell me how much you are selling it for. No matter the price, I will not bargain or haggle. Tell me the price. Fong Fei Fei wished to say something, but she had already heard Hansen was not willing to sell. She looked at Hansen with shock. Chapter 3073, Robbery? Fong Fei Fei looked at Hansen with surprise. Rejecting the temptation of money was not difficult, but he should have considered it before rejecting Mr. Jean. Gong Shu Jean was the son of the Gong Shu band, who had the title of a genius. When he was young, he was already very famous in the Jade Wall City. He was not just very good at fighting since he had the talent of Mr. Gong Shu's landpool skill. He was not a very high-level officer of the Qin Kingdom, but his reputation was not something ordinary either. Mr. Gong Shu was a big mister in the Qin Kingdom, which was rare. God only knew how many nobles wanted to establish a good relationship with him. They wanted to hire him and have him locate land pulses for them. He knew a lot of people in the Qin Kingdom. Feng Fei Fei did not really like Gong Shu Jin but she did not want to offend him. The primary reason for this was because of the position of the Gongshu misters in the Qin kingdom. Hansen had just rejected him. Unless he had some sort of background that could strike fear in Gongshu Jin's heart, with Gongshu Jin's personality, Hansen was going to find himself in a spot of trouble. Feng Fei Fei knew everyone who had some level of authority in the Jade Wall, but she did not recognize Han Senator. This gave her a shock. Hansen was quickly leaving. Just a second later, he was gone from Night Cry Valley. Gong Shu Jin's eyes looked murderous, but it was just for one second. After that, his face was back to being pretty and soft. I was going to do something for Miss Fei Fei, but I was unable to do it, Gong Shu Jin said, as he walked before Feng Fei Fei. I feel so sorrowful and ashamed. It is fine, Mr. Feng Fei Fei coldly said. I was just interested in a moment. I am not interested any longer. I will take you back. Gong Shu Jin sat atop his unicorn and performed a requesting gesture. He wanted Feng Fei Fei to ride with him. Mister, that is very kind of you, but I would still like to walk around by myself. I am not going to trouble you. Feng Fei Fei bowed, flapped her wings of light, and flew out of the valley. Feng Fei Fei had obviously rejected him. Gong Shu Jin still needed to act like a gentleman, so he obliged her request and stopped pursuing her. He looked at Feng Fei Fei leaving and was immeasurably angered. He said, Feng Fei Fei, I'm going to make you feel sorry in bed tonight. After Hansen left Night Cry Valley, he went to the teleporter. Earlier, when Gong Shu Jin asked him to name a price, he regretted it. If he knew there was a noob that was willing to deliver himself, he would not have turned the mutant eight sound bug into an egg. He was going to sell it, anyway. It did not matter who he sold it to. If someone wanted to pay a high price, Hansen was more than happy to sell it. It was a shame the mutant eight sound bug had been turned into an egg. He could not randomly sell that to people. Before Hansen returned to the teleport place, he saw a shadow break space and arrive. Feng Fei Fei appeared in front of him. What is it, lady? Hansen asked. If you are coming to the mutant eight sound bug, there is no need for us to talk. Feng Fei Fei shook her head. I am not here for the mutant eight sound bug. Do you know who that man was? No, Hansen shook his head. I see. Feng Fei Fei displayed a wry smile. He is one of Jade Wall City's geniuses. He is a true demon genius. He is Gong Shu Jin. His father is the famous Gong Shu Ban. You just disrespected him. You are going to be in a lot of trouble. This thing started with Feng Fei Fei, so Feng Fei Fei did not want others to get into trouble because of her. Therefore, she went to warn Hansen. Thank you for the heads up. Hansen said with a wave. If there is nothing else, I will leave. Don't you believe me? Feng Fei Fei was startled by how calm Hansen appeared. She thought he did not believe what she had told him. She hesitated, but Feng Fei Fei took off her veil. She showed him her pretty face. She sighed and said, I wouldn't lie to you. We cannot play this nicely. If you believe me, I have an idea that can help you. Thanks, lady, but there is no need for that. Hansen said thank you and left. Feng Fei Fei looked at Hans and leave with shock. She did not know what she felt. She took off her veil to reveal her identity, but Hansen did not react. She was surprised. He doesn't recognize me. 
Feng Fei Fei looked at the space haunts and left with a flurry of conflicted emotions. She did not, however, give chase. She had done all she could. If Hansen insisted on getting into trouble, it was no longer her concern. Feng Fei Fei was a very famous singer, and not just to the Qin people. Even people from the other six kingdoms knew her. Even if they hadn't seen her in the flesh, they would have seen her performances online. It was rare for someone not to know her. Feng Fei Fei thought Hansen might have been pretending not to know her and had another purpose, but Hansen really did not know who Feng Fei Fei was. He had not been in this world for long and he had not really paid attention to the celebrities. Regarding Feng Fei Fei's reminder, Hansen believed it, but it was just attributed to Gong Shu Jin. For that, he did not care. Old Yang, how's the online shop going? Hansen returned to where he lived and asked Mr. Yang for a status report. I have done everything you asked of me. Mr. Yang looked at Hansen weirdly as he asked. You can hawk your wares whenever you want to, but are you sure you really want to use this name? Yes, Hansen said with a smile. Hansen was not very good at naming things. His online shop was called Shop. From what Mr. Yang saw, this name was not overbearing or particularly eye-catching. A shop's name should have been impressive. Since that was the name Hansen had selected, he did not say anything. Old Yang put these items on sale. The prospect of being able to eat hinges on the sale of these, Hansen said with excitement. He used to lead the world but this was the first time he had opened a shop. Mr. Yang had a wry smile. He and Li Bingyu felt the same. They did not think an online shop was a good idea. Seeing that Hansen was so interested in it, they did not say anything disrespectful about it. He asked, Mr., what are you planning to sell? Li Bingyu was nearby. She looked at Han Senator. She also wanted to know what Hansen was hoping to sell. I went to Planet Guya and lucked out. I found some gene eggs. They are not high level but they should last a while. Old Yang, come have a look at these. How much should I sell these for? Hansen pulled out a gene egg to show Mr. Yang. Mr. Yang did not expect Hansen would have gene eggs on a two-day trip. He picked one of them up, looked at it, and said, Mr., you are very lucky. This is a Viscount class toxic gecko. It has the combined skill of toxic spray. Its power is quite high for a Viscount. You could sell it for a few thousand dollars. What about this? Hansen took out a gene egg and showed it to Mr. Yang. This is... 8 sound bug gene egg. Mr. You are very lucky. Although 8 sound bugs are Viscount class gene eggs, the going price is far more lucrative than what the toxic gecko will get you. You could sell this for 5 digits. I will have to do some actual research for the blue book value. Mr. Yang was truly shocked. You sell these for now. Hansen took out a dozen 8 sound bug gene eggs and gave them to Mr. Yang. Mr. Young was frozen as he looked at the gene eggs. His eyes and mouth opened wide. He made no sound. After a while, Mr. Young managed to ask, Mr., were you involved in a robbery? Chapter 3074, Treasure in the Box. Robbery? From where could I have possibly stolen these things? Hansen took out a silver mutant eight sound bug and tossed it to Mr. Young. Mr. Young picked up the eight sound bug egg and looked at it. His eyes almost popped out of his skull. Mr. Did you really dig this up? Hansen laughed and replied, Of course. Does it look like I gave birth to it? Mr. Yang was unable to believe it. Hansen did not know any land pull skills. He had just randomly gone to Planet Guya to dig around. Yet, he had found a dozen eight sound bug eggs. On top of that, one of them was a mutant eight sound bug. This was an unbelievable thing. It was something of a genuine miracle that was unheard of. If everyone was as lucky as Hansen, all the misters in the universe would starve to death. This was the first time Mr. Yang had doubted his career. He didn't quite know what to say. Li Bingyu could not believe Hansen had managed to dig up eight sound bucks. She thought, he must be connected to Qin Bai. It looks like my chance has come. Old Yang, I will hand the gene egg over to you, Hansen said to Mr. Yang. Sell it for a good price. Our lives are depending on it. Mr. You shouldn't sell this mutant eight sound bug gene egg, Mr. Young said. Just sell the ordinary eight sound bug eggs. This mutant egg should be kept as a highlight of the shop. With that on display, it will be sure to attract a lot of business. Just see what you can do. Hansen was not really interested in money. He only required enough money to get by in the walled jade city. Where is Chin Wanner's dead body? Hansen had a look at the map, but the walled jade city was too big. 
It was hard to locate the mysterious place by Mo had mentioned. Hansen bought some frozen gene race blood online. They were low class, so they did not cost much. With the quantum transport system, even if it was a few systems far away, they could just drop it in the transport station for the delivery man to take. Hansen quickly received a few bags of the gene race blood. He then locked himself in a room. He put the stone box in a bathtub. He placed the frozen bags of blood atop the stone box. When the blood touched the stone box, some weird symbols lit up. They released a cold and petrifying light. Wherever the petrifying light touched, regardless if it was metal or flesh, it was petrified. Even Hansen's clothes were petrified. It was a shame that the petrified light could not do anything to Hansen's body. All Hansen felt was something slightly cold. His skin and hair had avoided petrification. As more blood was poured onto the stone box, the patterns on the box appeared as if they could absorb the blood. All of the blood was absorbed by the patterns. Hansen put many bags of blood inside the box. The blood color of the patterns started to appear darker, and the petrifying light grew stronger. When there was only one bag of blood left, Hansen suddenly heard a catch and noise. The stone box opened. I wonder what is hidden inside there. Hansen was very curious. He opened the stone box and was quite shocked. The stone box contained a circular stone that was the shape of an egg. There was a mouth on its top and six holes on its side. The entire stone was gray. All in all, it looked like a stone ocarina. The ocarina was an instrument, and he was no stranger to such an instrument. Ancient Devil had eight generals, and one of them was named Xiong Yin. She gave Hansen an ocarina and taught him how to blow it. It was a shame that Hansen was not very good with music. He tried to learn it for a while, but he never was successful. He only seldomly used it to entertain himself. Right now, he was seeing an ocarina. He held it in his hand and felt rather sad. When Xiong Yin ascended, he had tried to find her but couldn't. That made Hansen feel terrible. The stone box's petrified light was gone. Hansen touched the stone ocarina, sighed, and said, Little big sister Xiong Yin, where are, you, are you? It was an old stone ocarina. There were no patterns on it. It was a very rough stone ocarina that did not look very pretty. The stone ocarina's surface was not polished very well, and it was rather crude. It looked like something from ancient times. Hansen rummaged through the stone box. Aside from that stone ocarina, there was nothing else to find. What a weird stone box. Whatever is inside it cannot be anything normal. Hansen looked to his left, and then his right. Whatever the case was, he couldn't see anything particularly outstanding about the ocarina. After thinking for a moment, Hansen put the stone ocarina next to his mouth and tried playing a song. He wanted to see if the stone ocarina possessed any special powers. As Hansen blew into it, the ocarina did not play any sound. Aside from the wind, there was nothing. Weird. Why is there no sound coming from the ocarina? Hansen looked at the ocarina in shock. He examined it for a while but did not see anything amiss. The stone ocarina was not damaged. It was like an average ocarina without any clogged holes. The fact that it was not producing any sound was strange. He again placed the ocarina next to his mouth. This time, Hansen gathered his Xian Yellow Sutra and put a strong power in his breath. He blew into the stone ocarina. Woohoo! A very sorrowful ocarina sound was heard. Hansen moved his finger to create different tones. After he moved his finger, Hansen was surprised that the holes had started to produce smoke. The smoke gathered in the air and turned a white cloud. What is this? Hansen stopped blowing the ocarina. He looked at the white cloud in the air. It looked like the cloud from the Monkey King. From outside, Hansen suddenly heard the cloud starting to make a very vague sound. The sound was not very quiet, but it was still hard to hear. It was like a woman mumbling. It was like she was reading out a Buddhist chant. Who was in there? Hansen frowned. He punched the cloud. The cloud broke around his hand. It vanished. The sound was gone. What is this thing? Hansen frowned. He picked up the ocarina and started blowing it. The whole of the ocarina generated some smoke that arose to form another cloud. Hansen leaned his ear forward to listen. Again, he heard that same, strange mumbling come from the cloud. It sounded close but also far away. It sounded very unstable. Hansen listened to it intensely. Eventually, his face changed. The cloud suddenly disappeared again. He quickly picked up the ocarina and played it to generate another cloud. This time, 
Hansen listened more carefully. After a while, his expression looked weird. Chapter 3075, Many Nobles Are Beneath the Prince's Feet The sounds coming from the cloud were something Hansen had heard before. They were the same sounds that had accompanied Golden Growler's Golden Door. No one knew what was beyond the Golden Door. Whatever was pulled inside it was dead, that much was certain. At least, no one was able to leave when pulled inside. When Hansen was standing before the Golden Door, he had heard a weird sound. It was like an ancient god was praying or reading the chants of the Buddha. It was just that Hansen had not entered the door. He stood outside the golden door and listened, but it was never something clear. Now that he was trying to remember it, the sounds of the golden door were just like the sounds coming from the cloud. Hansen just did not understand what the sounds meant. Many women loved shopping, even the three big singers, which included Fong Fei Fei. She was browsing around in the virtual community. She was different from ordinary women. She did not have to buy makeup products. She was in search of the eight sound bug. She had been unable to get an eight sound bug from Night Cry Valley and could not be bothered going back there again. So she planned on buying eight sound bugs online instead. She wanted to create gene medicine for bolstering her throat. She searched for an eight sound bug and sorted the results by price from high to low. Fong Fei Fei did not care about shopping for a bargain. She wanted the best stuff and that was that. A line of virtual products appeared before her. Fong Fei Fei was used to browsing prices from high to low, but she froze upon seeing the first item. Mutant 8 sound bug egg? Really? Fong Fei Fei clicked on the item. The photo of a mutant 8 sound bug egg appeared. It really is a mutant 8 sound bug egg. Fong Fei Fei was very happy. In the virtual community, the shop scanned the real items. If there was a picture, one could bet their bottom dollar that it was genuine. When Fong Fei Fei looked at the price, she frowned. The price was placed at the maximum. It was a healthy sum of 9,999,999. A mutant 8 sound bug egg was very rare, but it was just an Earl class creature. That price was far too ridiculous to consider. Clearly, the shopkeeper was not going to sell it properly. Boss, how are you selling the mutant 8 sound bug egg? Fong Fei Fei asked after contacting the person running the shop. Dear, the shop is selling it at the price listed. It is indeed available for purchase. You can feel free to order it at any time. We will have it delivered in 24 hours. If not, we'll pay you double. It was Jiang Shir. Mr. Yang was in charge of running the shop, but Jiang Shir operated the customer services. She worked really hard. Even if she received complaints, she never got mad about it. Jiang Shir and Yu Yu used to be slaves. Now, they followed Han Senator, he did not treat them like slaves. Jiang Shi was very grateful for that. She tried to do her best with whatever task Hansen asked them to do. I really want to buy it, so give it to me at the price you truly want to sell it for, Feng Fei Fei said. Dear, I really cannot sell it to you for a lower price, Jiang Shi quickly said. That is as low as it can go. You can take a look at the other products in the shop if you would prefer. There are very economical Viscount Class 8 sound bug eggs for sale. They are of good quality and fairly priced. Their abilities are great too. Those were the lines Mr. Yang had taught her to say. She performed them very well. Feng Fei Fei looked around. She saw the shop was selling ordinary 8 sound bug eggs. With her identity, the ordinary 8 sound bug eggs did not really entice her. If you really want to sell it sometime, why don't you send me a message? We can talk about the price some more. After saying that, Fong Fei Fei put the mutant 8 sound bug egg in her shopping cart. All right, dear, Jiang Shi replied. Fong Fei Fei was a bit depressed. She did not want to buy the mutant 8 sound bug egg for herself. She wanted to send it to her little niece as a birthday gift. Although Fong Fei Fei had better sonic gene races, the level was too high. Her niece was too young. She could not combine with any high-level sonic gene races. The mutant 8 sound bug egg's level was not too high. Furthermore, it was a gene egg. If it hatched, it would be a baby. It did not tax the body too much, so it was suitable for a child. When the mutant 8 sound bug egg grew up and had an ultimate body, it would be very good to improve one's voice. It would be even better than a Marquise or Duke Clash gene egg. After all, sonic gene races did not only improve one's voice. Mutant 8 sound bugs did not do much in another direction. To improve one's voice, it was still a little bit worse than other sonic gene eggs. It is a shame the seller does not plan on selling it. 
Feng Fei Fei looked at the shop's name. She planned to remember that there was shop called shop. In Gongshu Manor, a worker went to Gongshu Jin's study. He bowed and said, Mister, the results of my investigation are here for your perusal. After that, the worker pulled out a file of information he had been tasked to collect and put it down in front of Gong Shu Jin. Good job. Gong Shu Jin looked at the information and coldly said, A redneck that comes from ancient god city. Huh? He has no background. He has no faction. In that case, how dare he insult me, Gong Shu Jin? I must teach him a lesson. If I don't, he won't understand what it means for many nobles to be under a prince's feet. Mr. People like that do not deserve you to take action. The worker bowed and suggested, perhaps you should send someone else. You are right, Gong Shu Jin said. I will let you handle it. Remember, you must bring the mutant eight sound bug's body back complete. It will be Miss Fei Fei's birthday in a few days. I will give it to her as a birthday gift. Do not worry, mister. I will do all this very secretively, Lu Jio said with very murderous eyes. Mister, five of the eight sound bug eggs have already been sold. Each one is sold for 35,000, and there are lots of people asking for the price of the mutant eight sound bug egg. Mr. Yang happily reported the results to Hansen. Their shop had only been open for a day, and they had already raked in a few sales. It was natural to feel ecstatic. Good job. Hansen nodded. The mutant egg was not a small price for Mr. Yang, but it meant nothing to Han Senator he did not really care about it. By the way, Mr., have you heard of one weird thing? Mr. Yang tried to test him. Hansen looked at Mr. Yang and asked, What weird thing? Mr. Yang looked at Hansen and said, It was the seventh of the last month when the Jade City had a big earthquake. The king's family's temple was destroyed. Someone saw that the temple had a gold beam of light shoot into space. Mr. Yang told him about this because the seventh day of the previous month was when he and Mr. Ming had dug up Han Senator. He thought there was a connection between the two events. Really? Aren't earthquakes breaking big buildings normal? Hansen quietly asked. Mr. It is normal for other cities to have earthquakes. But the Jade City is a space city that was man-made, Mr. Yang said. Why would there be earthquakes? After thinking for a moment, Hansen asked. Where is the King family's temple? Mr. Ordinary people cannot go there, Mr. Young quickly answered. There are lots of elites guarding it. Only members of the royal family can go there to pay their respects. They usually do that at some festival. Chapter 3076 Scary Gene Race Hansen could not say anything. After making up his mind, he decided to go take a look. Mr. Young did not know much. He provided him with some basic information. Although the king's alpha temple was heavily guarded, and there was a ceremony each year. Ordinary people could not get close. The best they could do was film things from afar. So, there was a lot of information about it on the internet. Hansen browsed and did some research on it online. He did so for a while and learned about the location of the King's Alpha Temple. He knew what the place looked like, so he knew what to look for. Why does this Alpha Temple look like the Metal Temple Taiyi fixed? Hansen looked at the temple in the video and felt rather shocked. Aside from this thing looking older, the whole shape of the Alpha's temple looked like the metal temple. On top, the words Big Chin Alpha Temple were written and not just Metal Temple. Hansen went to the temple was. He looked at the temple from afar. He wanted to sneak inside the temple, but it was not possible. Things were different now. Many places had fallen in the Alpha Temple. There were guards on patrol, but that very large Alpha Temple had many fallen areas that could not entirely be guarded. Hansen did not dare get too close. He did not want to draw attention to himself. He merely walked around the Alpha Temple to get a proper look. He soon frowned. The security was too heavy around the Alpha's temple. There were all kinds of tools of observation, and he could not use Geno Arts. It was for him to sneak into the Alpha's temple. Hansen did not know if it was a mistake, but he felt as if the Alpha Temple had something inside it that was calling out to him. It made him yearn to enter. Unfortunately, he was unable to go inside. So, Hansen abandoned the idea of entering the Alpha Temple. He would have to figure out another way some other time. W. Sum. On his way back home, Hansen saw some snacks that looked as if they tasted delicious. He looked at the time and noticed it was almost lunch. So, he brought some home with him. When he arrived home, Hansen called for Mr. Yang, Jian, Ugu, and the others to come around and eat. Only Li Bing. You was not around. 
The five of them sat around the table while Hansen presented them with some food that looked like a pie. It was for them to eat, but Jin Bugu suddenly stopped them from digging in. You can't eat this, Jin Bugu said. Hansen put the pie near his mouth and asked Jin Bugu, I can't eat this pie? Jin Bugu nodded. In the universe, there are many gene races. No matter if they are at a high or low level, every gene race has a unique feature. If they are used well, even low-class gene races can be quite useful. There is a saying that there are only rubbish gene users, but there are no rubbish gene races. Are you saying that there are gene races in it? Hansen frowned. Jian Bugu made the others put down their slice of pie. He went on to say, if I am not mistaken, there is an organ-eating bug inside the pie. If you consume this, it would grow quickly within your body. They would eat all of your organs until your body was an empty carcass. Then, you would die. Although this is just a Marquis gene race, over time, many high-class god-class gene elites have died by eating these organ-eating bugs. The organ-eating bugs are a very rare gene race. I am not sure who you have managed to offend to be given this. These organ-eating bugs were meant to kill you. On top of that, there are six of them. Organ-eating bug. Mr. Yang's face changed. He knew how scary the organ-eating bugs were. Hansen's face changed too. He was not afraid of organ-eating bugs, but the humans of the universe of kingdoms were different. There were many powerful elites here. With gene race powers, they could destroy the sky and ground, but their bodies were not too strong. It was just after being combined with a gene race that they could become a bit mightier. Compared to Han Sen, who could evolve his own body, that was a big difference. The organ-eating bugs would do nothing to Han Senator for Mr. Yang and the others. It would have been disastrous. Even if Jian Bugu had not known that and the organ-eating bugs entered his body, he would have been in a lot of trouble. Jian Bugu picked up the knife and cut the pie open. He pushed away the meat that was inside. There was a small little bug amidst the meat. It was the size of a sesame seed. If one did not pay attention, one would not notice it was there. Usually, no one opened their pie for examination before eating. Everyone looked terrible. Hansen's face looked even worse. If Jian Bugu was not there, Mr. Yang and the others would not be in a good shape right now. Don't worry. The organ-eating bugs are scary, but they are harmless as long as they are out of your body. They will sleep and not do a thing. You are totally fine in their presence. Jian Bugu picked up the organ-eating bug from out of the six pies. The six bugs, which looked like sesame seeds, were placed in a bowl. Once there, they did not move. Hansen looked glum as he asked, Can you find out who did this? Jian Bugu shook his head. If we had a sky mirror gene race, we might be able to locate the master. That way, you could find out who plotted to kill you. It is a shame that the gene race is very rare in the Big Qin Kingdom. Hansen looked at Jian Bugu and asked, What happens if they enter a body? Can their master feel this? The organ eating bugs will be active in their bodies, and the master will feel them, Jian Bugu said. Ordinarily, with the speed that the organ eating bugs breed, they will be dead within three days. Their entire bodies will be hollowed out. Hansen nodded. He picked up the six organ-eating bugs and walked outside. After he left, Hansen put the six organ-eating bugs in his mouth and swallowed them. He kept walking outside. It worked. Lu Jia was hiding near the hotel when he felt the organ-eating bugs get activated. He was overjoyed. Quickly, he felt the organ-eating bugs move, so he followed them. He saw Hansen walk outside the hotel alone. He thought that was a bit weird. He frowned and thought, weird. Why are all six organ-eating bugs inside him? He then thought it was all for the best. Six organ-eating bugs were inside Han Sen's body. That just accelerated the time it took for him to die. Lugio did not think anyone could survive the consummation of the organ-eating bugs. Now, he had no doubt about it. Kid, you need to blame yourself for this. It's your fault for being cocky and offending Mr. Jean. Lugio coldly laughed. He used the organ-eating bug since power to follow Hansen. He still needed to claim the mutant eight sound bug. So he followed Hans Senator. He was going to claim the mutant eight sound bug after Hansen died. Lugio felt the organ-eating bugs quickly breeding inside Hans Senator. There were so many of them, but he was shocked. It looks like it will take half the day to complete my task. With this fine work, Mr. Jean is sure to reward me. Perhaps I will get the beast I want. He followed Hansen for a while. He saw Hansen proceed to buy food on the street. He was like a foodie. He coldly laughed and said, he really does not know how much trouble he is in. 
He is still eating. He is like a pig. He eats a lot, and he is dumb. Suddenly, Hansen's face changed. He held his stomach and squatted on the streets. He started sprinting toward the hospital. He moved down the street and went into an alley. He laid on the ground, repeatedly moaning. His body was shaking. It looked like he was going to die. Seeing that no one else was in the alley, Lu Jio thought it was perfect. He did not need to hide. He went into the alley and approached Hansen. Be smarter when you are reborn, will you? Do not offend someone you cannot afford to. Lu Ji was going to touch Han Sen's body when he suddenly felt something was wrong. After people were eaten by the organ-eating bugs, they heavily bled. He did not see any blood on Han Sen. Lu Jiu felt terrible. He wanted to leave. Han Sen suddenly jumped to his feet, went before him, grabbed him by the neck, and lifted him up. Chapter 3077 Blood Spills in the Gongshu Manor Lu Jiu was in shock. Han Sen who was gripping him by the neck, had lifted his entire body. He saw that Han Sin's body was filled with purple air. A pair of weird eyes flickered demonically with a purple color. They stared at him, which made him feel shocked and angry. He wanted to summon a gene race to combine with, but Lu. Ji was shocked to discover that his god spirit blood, Pulse's connection kept disconnecting. He was unable to summon a gene race. Han Sin stared at Lu Jio and coldly asked, How do you want to die? Lugio suddenly felt his heart sink. He was going to be killed. As the power in Han Sen's hands increased, becoming stronger and stronger, Lugio felt as if his windpipe was ready to snap. He could not breathe. Obviously, his opponent was not going to ask him anything. He was unable to use a gene race, so Lugio had no hope of fighting back. He was in shock. He tugged at Han Sen's hands. While he had a chance to speak, he squeezed out a few words from his tightened throat. I just accepted the money to do this. Don't you want to know who wanted to do this to you? I will go after Gong Shu Jin. Hansen confidently spoke, but he was just testing Lu Jio. The only person he had slighted was Gong Shu Jin. Now, someone wanted to kill him. His assumption that it was Gong Shu Jin was an educated guess. Seeing Lu Jio's expression change, Hansen knew he was right. This is Jade Wall City. If you kill me, you cannot escape. Lu Jio struggled to wheeze. His face was red. Really? Hansen looked at Lugio coldly. More power was circulating in his hands. Lugio could not say anything anymore. His face looked like a pig's belly. Hansen did not break the man's neck outright. He opened his mouth and breathed out a black mist. Lugio saw the black mist. His shocked eyes looked as if they could not believe what they were seeing. Hansen was not emitting black smoke. It was organ-eating bugs. Lugio no longer felt the organ-eating bugs that belonged to him. All those organ-eating bugs were releasing a purple mist, and they went straight into his mouth. Lugio kept trying to struggle. In Hansen's grasp, he could not open his mouth. In shock, he could not help but watch the organ-eating bugs climb into his mouth and enter his body. Hansen waited for all the organ-eating bugs to enter his body before releasing his hold on his neck. He looked at Lugio like a dead dog on the floor and said, these are your organ-eating bugs. I hope you enjoy them. Lu Jio could not stand up. He wanted to connect with the organ-eating bugs, but he was not able to. The organ-eating bugs were out of his control. Eswe. Arg. Lu Jio felt as if his organs were being pinched by a thousand needles. He held his belly and screamed. He coughed up blood. His face looked pasty and white. He got up off the ground. Lu Jio held his belly and started running away. He wanted to live. He did not want to die. He thought about his organs being eaten by those organ-eating bugs and how that was such a painful way to die. After thinking about it, Lu Jio only wanted to run away. He was suffering from the organ-eating bugs as he ran back to Gongshu Manor. Blood kept spilling out of his mouth. Hansen coldly watched Lu Jio leave. He did not stop him. Previously, he had thought Lu Jio might have been lying. In a moment of life and death, no matter how strong that person's will was, there was always a flaw to discern. Plus, Lu Jiu was not someone with a strong will. In the universe of kingdoms, humans did not really count on their bodies. They depended on power. Most humans did not have a strong will. Lu Jiu was half falling as he ran back into Gongshu Manor. When the guard saw Lu Jiu's face, he was shocked. He held Lu Jiu and asked, Mr. Lu, what happened to you? Take. Take me to Mr. Jane. Every time Lu Jiu opened his mouth, black blood dribbled out. There was also some meat. The guard held him and took him into Gongshu Manor. 
Not far away from the Gongshu Manor, Hansen watched from an alley. He coldly smiled. Mr. Mr. Liu came back. Gongshu Jin was watching people dance in the garden when he heard a guard calling out for him. Before he spoke, Lu Jio came stumbling into the garden. Gongshu Jin smiled. He was not happy. Lu Jio's behavior was very rude. When he saw Lu Jio's face, his expression changed. He saw Lu Jiu was entering the garden shaking and with a mouth full of black blood and a wet chest. His face was pale, and his eye sockets were black. He looked like a zombie. Miss. Mister. Save. Save. Blurk. Lu Jiu ran to Gong Shu Jin for help. When he was nine feet away, his mouth filled with black blood and decomposing organs. They spilled out like blood ran that went everywhere. Lu Jiu's body leaned forward. His eyes were popping out of their sockets. His hands reached in Gong Shu Jin's direction as if he was asking for his help, but he had no more life force. Gong Shu Jin was shocked and angry. He watched Lu Jio die with his eyes open, staining the garden with his blood. His face looked like it had a pair of 10,000 year old eyes. Hansen went back to the hotel. He saw Jian Bugu and Mr. Yang waiting for him in the living room. He walked in and asked, Is there any way for us to prevent harm from a Jin race? He was not afraid of organ-eating bugs, but he knew the people next to him would be harmed. Fortunately, Jian Bu Gu was there this time. What if he was not around the next time? This time, organ-eating bugs had been used. Next time, it was likely to be something scarier. There was a chance it would be something his body could not block. Mr. Young was silent a moment before saying, There is. There is a gene race called Listen. It can identify gene races. If you get close to a gene race, a listen can find out about it. But these listens are just a legend. No one has seen any before. There are gene races with similar power. If their levels are too low, they can only sense other low-level gene races. They cannot sense all the gene races. It would be very rare. Hansen looked at Jian Bugu, who nodded and said, That gene race is very rare. If the level is too low, it would not do much. Ordinary gene casters use lamp grass bugs. It's the same type of gene race, and the level of a lamp grass bug is a viscount. They can only detect earls at the most, and it is very weak when it comes to water element gene races. Even with a lamp grass bug near, you cannot sense a marquee's organ eating bug. After pausing, Jian Bugu went on to say, There is a gene race that can sense a lot of things. Although it is just king class, if a god class gene race entered the area, it would be able to detect its presence. It's just that this gene race's gene eggs are very rare. From what I know, Lucia's shop has a few, but they are wild adults. They can put them in the house, but they cannot be brought around. That does not do much. Chapter 3078 Holy Light Salamander Hansen felt quite tempted after hearing that. What is that gene race called? Jin Bugu thought about it and said, I remember it was called a pure light salamander. It is a gene race that only appears next to the Holy Light River. It is a born king class race, but most of its powers are not strong. Even a duke class gene race can easily consume it, but it is very good at sensing gene races. Before gene races get close to it, it starts to run. It can be very difficult to catch, and the gene eggs of pure light salamanders are extremely rare. As far as I know, Jade Wall City only has five pure light salamanders. Three of those belong to the palace. It will be very difficult to claim a pure light salamander egg. Hansen made up his mind. He had to get himself a few pure light salamanders. Wild pure light salamanders did not make much difference to him other than finding the gene eggs. With a pure light salamander in his sights, he would at least feel safe. He did not say anything more. If Lucher's shop had a pure light salamander, he would just go and buy a few. Mr. Jian, in the top class gene races, are there any gene races that have blue blood? Ever since Hansen had reached the universe of kingdoms, he realized the humans there did not train their bodies. Their blood was red. Qin Shou's body had blue blood. There was an 80% chance that he had gotten that by combining with a gene race. Perhaps it was not Qin Shou's real blood. Jian Bugu thought for a moment and replied, There are a lot of gene races with blue blood. Regarding the most famous, it would undoubtedly be our big Qin Kingdom's Alpha King World King God. He was an ultimate gene race that was far above God class. It was a shame World King God disappeared with the Alpha King. It did not remain. 
Otherwise, the Big Chain Kingdom would not have gone downhill after the Alpha King vanished. Hansen quickly asked, What kind of gene race was that? World King God was a legendary creature that controlled one world, Jin Bugu said. No one can tell you what it looks like anymore. From the information that has remained available, it should be a very rare humanoid gene race. Hansen asked Jin Bugu about gene races. Mr. Yang had a lot of knowledge too, but he was not as good as Jian Bugu. That was certain. Mr. Yang only knew a bit of information whereas Jian Bu. Du knew about high-class gene races in far greater details than Mr. Yang could ever provide. He gave Hansen a better understanding of the power of gene races in that world. The Holy One White Deer, in Jian Bugu's ratings, was only a beginner. To ordinary gene casters, it was something godly. To a real top-class elite, it was just a beginner tool. As for the gene races in the legends, such as World King God, they were something each of the seven kingdoms had. They were something that existed to preserve a kingdom, which made Hansen feel more alert. It seems like this world is not as straightforward as I assumed it to be. Things about Qin Xiao are weird. If blue blood is World King God's blood, then the person who died on that day. Could it really have been Qin Xiao? Hansen suddenly started to have many questions. After talking to Jian Bugu, Hansen headed to Lu Xiu's shop. He had already offended Gong Shu Jin. He would probably have a fight with him soon. Considering that, Hansen had to make sure he was prepared. Before Hansen had the chance to kill Gong Shu Jin, he needed to make sure he, Mr. Yang, and the others were safe. He had to get his hands on a pure light salamander. Even if Gong Shu Jin was not going after them, there could very well be others on their trail in the future. This type of gene race seemed like a necessity, lest guaranteed harm befell them someday. Lu Xiu's shop was one of the biggest shops in the chain. Kingdom. It conducted business across the entire universe. Gene races and gene eggs were just one portion of its business. It had all kinds of other shops in the big cities. Lu Xiu's shop did not have online ordering. People had to go to a store in person to buy something even so. Lu Xiu's shop was still the best in the chain kingdom. It had lots of gene races and gene eggs, and there was a huge variety of types. It was better than most of the smaller shops. When Hansen went to Lu Xiu's shop, he told people he wanted a wild pure light salamander. The results surprised him. A wild pure light salamander's price was 3 million each. That price was equal to a god class gene egg, and that was just a wild version. Plus, one was only able to keep it as a pet. The shopkeeper patiently explained things to Han Senator. He told him that pure light salamanders were king class and very rare, and they were exceedingly difficult to catch. With its abilities, many rich people bought one pure light salamander. That was why the price had become so expensive. A wild one could not be taken out, but it could be kept at home. If a gene ray sought to invade its abode, it would react. So, it was useful. The rich people loved pure light salamanders. I can't even buy a wild pure light salamander. Hansen felt a bit sad. He counted all his money. He didn't have enough to even buy a wild pure light salamander. There was no way he could afford a gene egg. No way. I will just have to go to the holy light river to catch a pure light salamander. Hansen returned to the hotel and looked up information on the holy light river and pure light salamanders. Catching a pure light salamander was not easy. The holy light river was back on planet Guya. Hansen had been there, but he had remained in a safe zone without any high-class gene races. Holy Light River was different. It was in a region dubbed the Dead Zone of Planet Guyo. Holy Light River was a mysterious, superland pulse. After a billion years, Holy Light River had created many scary gene races. God-class gene races always appeared in Holy Light River. Even many of the Qin Kingdom's top-class elites did not dare go to Holy Light River. The Pure Light Salamanders appeared on the banks of Holy Light River. They were amphibious but spent most of their time in the river. They seldomly ventured ashore. Holy Light River was very dangerous, and the Pure Light Salamander could sense the presence of other gene races. If humans used a gene race before they got close to it, the Salamander would escape deep into Holy Light River. If people did not combine themselves with a gene race in Holy Light River, it was practically a death wish. Therefore, capturing a pure light salamander was not easy. These were difficulties that would not hinder Han Senator. He decided to go to Holy Light River. Before he departed, he warned Mr. Yang and the others that before he returned, no one should leave the hotel. 
He also had Jian Bugu do his best to take care of them. That was Jade Wall City. Even Gong Shu Jin could not murder people on a whim. He had to use Jin races to assassinate them. If Jin Bugu was there, it would be difficult for him to do so. As long as Mr. Yang did not leave Jin Bugu's sight, he would be fine. Plus, Gong Shu Jin's ultimate target was Han Senator while Hansen was gone. Gong Shu Jin would not be interested in Mr. Yang and the others. After Hansen left the hotel, he felt as if he was being followed. He entered Planet Guya. The news was quickly received by Gong Shu Jin. Gong Shu Jin looked murderous. He coldly said, Very good. Chapter 3079 Holy Light River. Holy Light River was on the highest highland on Planet Guya called Miladia. It was the highest river there. It had the name River in the Sky. The number of people that dared to go there were few. The entire length of Holy Light River was a few dozen thousands of miles long. It had countless smaller rivers branching off it too. Wherever the river reached, it was in proximity with a super big land pulse. In the past few billions of years, God only knew how many gene races had been birthed by it. The gene races there were not just high level. They evolved a lot. The scarier thing about it all was that there were many different types of species. They all had weird powers, and people could not predict them. Although Hansen's body was strong, he was suppressed by this world. His detection senses were slow, so it was hard to discover rare gene races before they disappeared. One branch of Holy Light River, called Little Piano River, had a teleport station. After Hansen exited the teleport station, he headed for Little Piano River. The pure light salamanders lived in the areas that contained shallower waters. People seldomly saw them chilling on the shores, but they were very rare creatures. They were difficult to find in any position. Little Piano River was very cold, and there were not many people there. Due to the fact it was so dangerous, few people ventured there. With great care, Hansen proceeded. In no time at all, he saw many gene races. In the sky, there were many avian gene races in flight. In the very clear river, peeking ducks and swan-like gene races were playing around. He also saw a gene race in the river that looked like a giraffe. On both sides of the river, he could barely see loads of weird small beasts and bug-type gene races flying. There were too many gene races there. Although most of them were low-level and not harmful, who knew if there were more dangerous types just lurking in wait? Hansen did not know much about gene races. He did not know which were dangerous and which to look out for. Before he went there, he had bought a book about gene races. When he arrived, he noticed that the book did not help him as much as he thought it would. There were too many gene races. In only a few moments, he had seen a few dozen types of them. If he had to check them all out, it would take him an entire day. Because his body was invincible and he had the blood ghost spirit, Hansen could just gnash his teeth and get on with it. He headed for Little River Piano and dived in. He followed the river and checked around the bank, hoping to find one of the pure light salamanders. Hansen did not summon a gene race because the pure light salamander was very sensitive to gene races. With gene races all around, Hansen was unable to see the pure light salamander. Even if there was one nearby, it would have left already. Fortunately, not all gene races like to attack humans. Most gene races just let humans be. Some gene races were even scared of humans. When Hansen got close to them, they just ran away. It looks like Holy Light River is not as scary as the stories claim it to be, Hansen thought. A group of black swans was swimming atop the river. The surface shared the same color as the sky. It was like the sky and the sea had blended. The black swan looked as if it was swimming in the sky. The smell of the grass, woods, and flowers were in his nose. They made Hansen feel very cool and comfortable. It was a shame that the entire way, he had been unable to find a trace of a pure light salamander. Hansen had to keep walking, flicking through the book in search of a rare gene race. He could still turn those into eggs and sell them. He was unable to find a pure light salamander the whole way. If he could not do that, he would have to earn a lot of money to spend a lot of money at Lucher's Emporium. At least, he could purchase a wild pure light salamander there to turn into an egg. After half a day, he had been unsuccessful in getting anything. There were many gene races, but most of them were worthless. Hansen could not be bothered to bring any of them home with him. While he was walking, he saw a person standing near the river. The person looked like he was in his twenties, but he also looked very strong. The most eye-catching thing about him was his lack of hair. He had a big bald head that could reflect one's face. 
The big baldy was standing near Little Piano River. He was looking down the river, but it was difficult to determine what exactly he was after. Did he find a rare gene race? Maybe he found a pure light salamander. Hansen's heart jumped. He went toward the big baldy. As he walked, he asked, Friend, what are you looking at? The big baldy ignored him and continued staring into the river. He was like a focused fisherman, but his hands lacked a fishing apparatus. Hansen observed the man's face and noted how happy he looked. This just amped up his curiosity. Hansen walked up to the big bald man and asked, Friend, are you okay? Again, the big baldy just ignored him. Hansen thought this was weird. He didn't know what was wrong with the bald guy, so he tried looking toward where the man was looking. Beneath the feet of the big bald guy was the river. The depth of the running water was only a foot deep. The river was very clear. It looked like a seamless crystal in perfect condition. One could see right through and admire the river's bed. Hansen had a closer look. It seemed as if, aside from he sure cobblestone, there were no fish or shrimp. At the very least, there was not a pure light salamander there. Hansen looked at the bald man and asked, Friend, what are you looking at? The bald man behaved as if he had not heard anything. He continued to stand where he was and stare at the river. If it was not for the fact he was still breathing, Hansen would have taken him for a dead man. What is this guy doing? Is there something nice in the river that I cannot see? Hansen felt confused. He looked to the portion of the river the bald man was looking toward. This time, Hansen was focused and clear. He looked at that spot over and over. He did not miss a grain of sand, yet there was still nothing. Nope. There really wasn't anything. Down in the water was just that very clear water. There was not even a touch of moss. Hansen looked at the bald man. Seeing him remain so focused, it did not look as if he was pretending all this either. Hansen frowned and examined him a bit closer. After a while, he did not think this was right. This bald man's focus does not seem to be at the bottom of the river. It is above the river. Hansen's heart jumped. He looked at the surface. The surface had nothing either. If there was, Hansen should have been able to see it. The clear water was like a mirror. It reflected the image of two people. Hansen suddenly realized the bald man seemed to be looking at his own reflection. What is wrong with him? Why is he looking at himself in the water? Hansen looked down into his own reflection. After looking, even Hansen was frozen. Beautiful. Very beautiful. Hansen never noticed he had grown up so handsomely. The reflection of himself looked like some rare, beautiful man. He looked at himself once. It looked as if he was in love. It was like seeing a beautiful woman for the first time and not being able to take one's eyes off her. It made one's heart jump like a mad deer. Chapter 3080 Couldn't Help It Hansen was finally aware of the reason why the bald man was staring at the water and not moving. Now that he looked at his reflection in the water, Hansen only had one feeling. So F asterisk King Handsome. Hansen knew there was something wrong, but he could not keep his eyes off his reflection. He really liked it. He absolutely adored it. It was like he had encountered the sort of love he had been longing for all his life. Hansen and the bald man squatted near the river. Their heads were lowered. They stared as if they were obsessed. This is wrong. This is really wrong. I can't keep looking, but it looks so good. Hansen felt conflicted. He could not help himself from looking. Even with his profound willpower, he could not deny the temptation. Hansen knew this had nothing to do with his willpower. He knew he had been captured by some sort of power. It twisted his willpower, making him fall in love with the reflection he saw. Hansen was only happy that he was not in love with the bald man's reflection. When it gets dark and there is no more light, maybe I won't be able to see the reflection anymore. Hansen's heart still had some clarity. He just could not escape it completely. As time passed, the two of them remained squatted near the water's edge. He saw the sun go down and the sky go dim. Hansen thought it would be better after this, but Planet Guya did not just have one moon. There were three of them. Three bright moons in the sky kept the night illuminated. Their reflections in the river were still very clear. The scariest part was that Hansen was so in love with his reflection that he had the thought to hug the image. Hansen only wanted to do it. The bald man had already stood up, opened his arms, and walked into the river. He was going into the river with a smile on his face. Hansen's willpower could barely contain the desire. He forced his eyes to watch the bald man. He was swimming into the river, continuing to smile. He was going deeper into the river. The clear river covered his knees. 
It soon covered his waist. Hansen watched the bald man walk into the river. His face hadn't changed. His smile had grown bigger. It looked as if he was going to hug the lady he liked. It must be some sort of gene race doing this. The gene races of this world are a bit weird. What are they playing at? Hansen understood that, but he could not help but stand up. He started walking into the water. He knew this was a reflection, and he knew he should not be doing any of this. Yet he could not help but want to hold the reflection in the water. It looked as if only doing that could erase the bitterness of missing someone one loved. It felt like the storyline of a lame movie. Although one knew that person murdered a parent, one still could not help fall in love. It was like a moth to a flame. They knew they were going to die, but they didn't stop themselves. Is this Gong Shu Jin? Is he playing tricks again? No way. If it was him, he could just kill me right now. I am trapped by this weird power. I cannot move. Han Sen was still thinking as his body reached the river. The river was cold, but it could not stop the fire in his heart. He walked deeper into the water. Seeing the river's water go past his legs, he could still not stop his progression. He wanted to summon a gene race, but it was futile. People who were in love could never raise a sword to their lover. It was not because he couldn't. It was because he did not want to. Although Hansen knew this kind of unwillingness was not his true will, he could not deny it. The bald man had gone in the water sooner than him, and he had walked faster than Han Senator now. The water was going above the man's bald head. Hansen knew the man was going to die. Humans in this world did not have a strong body. Without the help of a gene race, he could not survive underwater for a long time. Hansen knew he would be fine. Even if he was tricked into the water, he could live just fine. If he was supposed to be drowned, it would be impossible for that to happen. I would like to see what other tricks you have. Hansen quickly walked farther into the river until the water went above his eyes. He could no longer see his reflection. Even though the reflection had disappeared, he was not set free. Under the water, he saw someone in the river. It was someone who looked exactly like him. He was smiling deep in the river. Hansen could not help but walk toward him. He walked deeper into the river. Hansen saw the bald guy ahead of him look terrible. His mouth kept producing bubbles. He was obviously filled with water and no longer capable of breathing. He was going to drown very soon. Even so, the bald man's face still displayed happiness, but that happiness looked extremely scary. It was like the smile of the reaper. Hansen frowned. Although he did not know that bald man, he was not an enemy. He did not want to watch someone of his same kind die in front of him. Hansen wondered if he should break the restrictions of the world when he saw a weird light. Hansen looked toward it. He saw a blurry light appear under the river. It was like there was a giant gym glowing beneath the river. The shadow that was enticing Hansen forward was the light under the river. Hansen looked at the light. It started coming into focus what that light was. It was a giant shell. It was creamy white, and transparent. It looked as if it was made of jade. The giant shell was open. When Hansen looked at the shell, the shadow was inside the shell. It looked like it combined with someone in the shell. It made Hansen put his love into that shadow. At last, Hansen saw what the shadow in the shell was. It was a graceful woman. Her body was inside the shell. Her hands were holding her breathtaking cheeks. She was wearing a veil that was half transparent. It waved in the water. It made her body look extra sexy. The woman was just lying on the side watching Hansen from her position on the shell. She said nothing and did nothing, but Hansen was like a moth flying to a fire. He walked toward her. It was like she was someone he had loved for a thousand years. He wanted to hold her and tell her how much he loved her. The bald man in front had already passed out. It was unknown if he had just drowned or what. His body was floating and sinking because his stomach was bloated like a ball. Hansen was still enticed by the power. He walked to the shell woman. Her eyes looked like they could speak. It was like they were saying, Come, my husband and lover, come to my embrace. 